Welcome to episode 19 of the Imperial Tides podcast. Uh, today, I'm here with Dad again, and we're going to be talking about Star Trek Good V, morning. the Final Frontier uh, in 1989. So, to start off with... Uh, so, to start off with, let's talk about some... Uh, let's go over some fun facts. Uh, so, this movie was released on the 9th of June in 1989. It made $63 million on a $33 million budget. Uh, according to its producer... Harv Bennett, it nearly killed the Star Trek franchise. So that's a, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good yeah, way to come into yeah, this. Yeah. I've heard that before. Mm. Uh, William Shatner, the uh, the Shat himself, uh, directed this one. Shatner actually based the film in part on the rise of televangelism that was going on in the U.S. at the time. Oh, yeah. And the high potential for fraud among its now. practitioners. Well, I see that now. He would wake up at 4 a.m. every morning during shooting, no matter what time he fell asleep the night before, because of his exercise routine and directing duties. To get in shape for his return to the role of Kirk, he practiced aerobics and strength training daily. Uh, there was a Writers Guild strike going on at the time of uh, pre-production. They were forced to rewrite the script several times in order to please both the cast and execs at Paramount. Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly both objected to the premise in the original draft that Spock and Bones would betray Kirk to join Cybok. The movie's ending was reworked because of poor test audience reactions and the failure of planned special effects. Industrial Light and Magic's best crews were busy at the time of production and would have cost too much for the budget the movie had. So production used Bran Farron's company for special effects, which had to be revised several times in order to lower production costs. Sean Connery was originally supposed to play Cybok, but was too busy doing Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The mythical planet Shakari was named in his honor. See, so Sean Connery, Shakari. That's yeah, that, no, that, no, that would have been completely different. And we'll talk about that, but that would have been a completely different feel than that actor that you kind of ruined it for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So Shakari in the movie, it, that, it, that, it, that it is named after It would have flipped Connery. the movie for me. How do, you, how do you movie. feel about that, though, that the, the planet now is Now I see that. Now yeah. I see that. Does that uh, make it better for you? Or? No, no, yeah. but I, I, I'm wondering if, um, if that is more fan wishful thinking or an actual fact. I think it's an actual fact. Okay, all right. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that planet Shakari was named in Sean Connery's honor. Uh, Lawrence Luckinbill, who did end up playing uh, Cyborg, your favorite actor of all time, uh, was discovered by Shatner by chance, actually. So it was a miracle that he was even in the movie to begin with. Uh, Shatner was channel surfing late one night and saw Luckinbill performing as Lyndon B. Johnson. When Shatner called to offer him the role, Luckinbill accepted immediately. Last quick fun fact, uh, the sounds for the Klingons were made with chains and leather to create a very rough sound for them. So whenever oh, they're I, moving I and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that. that's all chains and leather I for you. Biker yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. I think it's fitting. So uh, now to move on from fun facts to just a general synopsis to catch everybody up. Uh, the movie is about basically uh, Kirk and pals. They meet uh, Spock's emotional brother, Cybok, who wants to <laughs> spread the word about some deity he thinks is God. Uh, he hijacks the Enterprise and forces Kirk and pals to take him to a faraway planet where God supposedly lives. Uh, however, in the end, it turns out that he, uh, who he believed to be God is, in fact, some sort of celestial criminal who is living on the, other, the planet as a prisoner in exile. Uh, disillusioned and ashamed for everything he did up to that point for a God that turned out to be false, Cybok sacrifices himself to save his brother and the rest. And that's pretty much everything. Okay. So uh, to start off with uh, Dad, to start the discussion off, uh, what would you rate this movie out of ten, and why? Oh, God, for for the actor, aesthetically, it, it it was just a mess for me. The actor who I've seen outside of um, Vulcan makeup is a perfectly good looking guy, a competent actor and everything. But then you put him in those ears and the uh, Ojai yurt uh, spa robes. And it's just really cringy, and you just want to throat punch him. Are you and, serious? Is oh, it really? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then oh, beyond man. that, even more so. Um, yeah, Commander. Uh, what was it? Was it um, uh, freaking uh, uh, bondage? Uh, <laughs> BDSM uh, Klingon bird of prey commander with his uh, pig nose and monkey face, and his wife beater, uh, sleeveless outfit. It doesn't matter um, how many chains and leather. Um, Foley effects and you know sound that you add to it. Um, he he was really cringy too. And again, that actor. Oh no, you can give me that. We're we're 
doing a flat uh, mug situation here. But that actor, again, outside of Klingon making him everything, good looking guy, good actor. You know, he hasn't done much afterwards, but it's just uh, that, you know, so, some people just do not take well to Klingon makeup, you know, in the high forehead, you know, and the, and he was a lean guy, uh, you know, so he looked like a lollipop uh, with a candy, he looked like a, basically a stick with a candy apple, you know, <laughs> stuck, stuck on it. It, it. The aesthetics are just all wrong. Now, the female bodybuilder that they used for the, uh, his number two, his first, you know, his first officer, his XO, um, she... Uh, convey the Klingon vibe very nicely. Nah, she kind of looked like a uh, you know, uh, like a dude to me. Well, that 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 was the point. You know, it is the Klingon race is a oh yeah 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 I guess right yeah yeah you know know, yeah um, she was right on there uh, better than I mean she was aesthetically I thought she captured it better than uh, one of the best Klingon females that I have seen next to the um, you know the uh, the uh, sisters in the Next Generation and Uh even with uh, Discovery so. you know, th- that, yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. Out of the that's actually good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. Actually, it makes sense within the context of the universe. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking at her as a as a human female. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 You know, with, with Alien. Her, with, yeah. With, with yeah, as a Klingon. It's supposed to be her different. Yeah. Tight bun and her uh, basically belligerent, warlike. I mean, she was. She nailed it. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which basically. But she didn't really know, have a part. So. No, yeah. but that was there were you know the, the aesthetic of the Klingon race was done a lot better afterwards because here you had a female. That was bigger than the male lead. That, that that was just completely, you know, taking me out of it. So the Klingons in the original series look better than the ones here. Uh, well, the, the Klingon in the original series had no makeup other than dark makeup, because they. Didn't but you think that's aesthetic. preferable to cringy makeup? No makeup is better than cringy makeup. They or were still, they, makeup. they were still trying to find their uh, legs with Klingon makeup. But then they got it right right after because I mean, yeah, next generation uh, going, comes going out into next soon. generation, and everything that came out afterwards. Uh, to me, um, I didn't even find the, the Discovery Klingons very controversial, even though that was a big uh, well, they, they point weird. of contention. Oh. Yeah, they look they weird. They look like orcs from Lord of the Rings more than they do Klingons. I, I do not. I, I, I think it's I, that 15% difference thing, though, you know, yeah. the rights or whatever. So Yeah, I, I don't argue that. They do, but it didn't bother me. But anyway, that's that's my rating. Well, I, I, it makes sense why it wouldn't bother you, though. It's not. It's out of your control. You know, there's nothing you can well, be done. Well, and aesthetically, it worked for me. You know, it worked for me. It was done well. Um, you know, sometimes change is good. Well, that kind of surprises me, but I don't know. That's well, weird. That's you know, weird. Change that's to me that was good change. It's very that radical made, change, though, don't you think? It, it was radical change, but you know I went with it. You know, okay. Hey, guys don't like the new mid-engine Corvette after years of having a front-engine Corvette. So these guys, these old guys with pot bellies and bald heads and gold chains and satin jackets are okay. all butthurt that the Corvette changed. All but right. is it a better car? Yes, it's a better car. Like the Mick Jagger wannabes of the world, or something. <sighs> You're giving them too much credit. Ah, I see. No, but so do do you think the Discovery makeup is better than the makeup in this for the Klingons? Oh, absolutely. Really? But then you're, you're looking at thirty years later too. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. Uh, do you think you would look good in Klingon makeup? I don't know. We'll give it a shot. Mm-hmm. Every, anytime you want to go to the next after COVID and everything, and you want to go to the Star Trek, Star Trek convention, yeah, no, do you want to dress yeah. up? I took you one time, didn't I? Yeah, it was fun. I like yeah, it. and I didn't even like Star Trek that much. Exactly, and, just, and now you have context. I like you know I like anything with fandom with passionate people or yeah. whatever. It's like it, there you it's go. cool. The passion rubs off on me, basically. That's right. I did take you, and we uh, got a picture with you on the transporter pad. That yeah, was a lot of fun. I, I yeah. like the transporter yeah. pad. Yeah, it was a good set. Yeah. I got to find that picture. Or a mock-up set or whatever you want to call it. It yeah. was actually, they they actually, the, those little uh, uh, frontal discs that they had, the little lighting discs they used for the pads from the original series, those were actually the ones from the set. So that was the whole point of that traveling transporter set. You could actually touch a piece of transporter in real Star Trek history. So even before you were a fan or you even knew about it, you did that. Yeah, I guess I got the the Lux treatment, huh? Yeah, Gold we plus to, or whatever. We went to that the symphonic thing too. That was fun. Oh, well, that was yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was, uh, that was a good father son memory. It was well put together, yeah. well composed. Yeah, yeah, that's all good stuff. Um, so where would you rank this among the six? Dead last. Okay. Six, okay. <laughs> Dead last. But go through your ranking. I'll have to do it one more time for the oh, last one. Oh, God. Let me see if it changes. Yeah. Um, it's fun. Today, see, now you get to think yeah, about it. Today, on this nice, cool, uh, dreary, which is wonderful for us today, I'm looking at motion picture, number one, undiscovered country. Who? okay. It gets hard after that one. Undiscovered country. Motion picture, undiscovered country. Oh, Rathacon. Rathacon, yeah. Rathacon. So that's three. Uh, Rathacon. (sighs) Search for Spock. No, 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 no. I'm going to do Voyage Home. 
Search for Spock, and then um, Final Frontier. Mm. Oh. Okay. Well, search, search, search for Spock is. Uh, where were we, where did I put for Search for Spock number five? Yeah, you say you kind of like it sometimes. Sometimes you don't. So, sometimes I don't. Yeah, you know, very mixed about it. Yeah, very very mixed about it. You know the the uh, the uh, uh, Mary uh, Kay Letourneau uh, uh, adult milf um, rape scene with uh, <laughs> Pod Far. Yeah, and, yeah. And eleven and fifteen year old Spock just kind of sits funny with me still. Yeah, cringy, cringy. Yeah, finger sucks is cringy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my... then again. The flip side of that, even talking about it like a couple of weeks later since we watched, we gave that a rewatch, that kind of was very bold and I kind of like, it almost elevates it to another, you know, almost puts it up to spot number four for me, you know, because that, that is realistically what would have had to happen. Yeah. Do you, do you want to watch Close Encounters later after this? Sure. After this? Yeah. Yeah. We should yeah. have time. Yeah. Let's do that. We don't have to record that one after. We just have to watch it. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I definitely give a, this is a good day for Close Encounters too. Yeah. All right. Okay. So my ranking would be, um. Oh, from from you know from greatest to least, it would be from my most favorite to my least favorite would be uh, uh, undiscovered country. Uh, nice, nice. I like that. Motion picture, Wrath of Khan. Nice, I like that. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Search for Spock. Okay. Then, oh, well, you like you like the Pond Far. Well, yeah. Well, which one am I? It's well, this well, one, well, and then. Well, you know, Final Frontier is going to be last, right? Well, what am I missing? Voyage Home. I'm missing another one, aren't I? Yeah. Cringy whale method, SJW whale message. It's not SJW, it's just whiny, I don't know. It's not it's just overt, I don't, I don't like how overt it is, but that's tough, see? That's tough, I don't know. It, it is overt, it is overt, the message is good. Do I pick something with a stupid overt message, or do I pick something that's just incompetent, you know, I don't know, for last, for dead last. I don't know. You know what I mean, I see? Know, yeah. Yeah. see it's, I'll it's, go with the whale one, because it, it has good moments, That that'll be fourth. Okay. Or fifth, I mean, fifth. Fifth will be um, Voyage Home, because it has funny moments. Sixth would be this one. It's just boring, you know? Uh, yeah, he, he, sixth would be Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, because it's boring as fuck. I don't know. It's just boring, and it's insignificant. It's forgettable. There are some good moments, but there are, there are less good moments than there are in um, Star Trek uh, Whale 4. So. Sure. Well, that's, that, that's kind of good that it, uh, 5 is insignificant because... It doesn't do as much damage as it It doesn't would. do as much damage. It could be taken out. Well, it's good that they're all pretty much standard. You know, out, out of the canon. And it doesn't hurt anything, except for the fact that now Spock has two siblings that we never knew about, Cybok, you know, and Michael Burnham. Mm. Yeah, but we, that, 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 that's for a future. I'm pretty sure Mikey Spock's worse, though. Because Mikey he, Spock is worse. Because he's the main character of her series, you know, and that's like a whole thing. But yeah. At least the Spock here, they don't even talk about it. It's like how they didn't even talk about Kirk's brother who died in the original series, remember? He was like, I had a brother, too, but it's not even, he's not even talking about... Remember that? Remember in that scene at the end of... um. Of well, the one where, uh, yeah, yeah, five. This one, this very right, one. Right, right, right. So, and the five where Kirk tries to console, you know, uh, Spock because Cybok just died. He's like, I lost a brother too, but then it's like his son. He's talking about his son from the other movies. Right. But then in the right. original series, he actually had a brother who died. Yeah, he did. And they didn't. They didn't even talk about that. He did. I know it's really nice. I, I, I'm hoping it snows a little bit, but I don't think it will. That was mom. Right. Yeah, by the way. Okay. Right, so, I mean, you know, there's that. Yeah, uh, I, I don't like how they really, you know, going back to the original series, I don't like how they skipped over Spock's, and it's Spock, Kirk's brother, you know, and, and, and his nephew. And, and I think if you have, you, we have not watched the, that episode no. where Kirk picks up his nephew on the planet. I mean, he mentioned it, but we haven't watched yeah. it yet. Um, we need to give that one a watch. I, I, I just, you know, uh, was it, I think his name is Peter Kirk. And what episode was that? No, in? That was an episode. We still have to watch the ones with Pimp Spock, you know, where he's like, uh, oh, I mean, he, he's got his, his game and stuff, you know. Oh, Pimp Spock has so much game. Showing off his game. Yeah. Wasn't this the one where he was about to like smack a hoe though? You know, too? like wasn't he about to bring the hand out, or was that the the sixth the sixth one with um the 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 smirky chick? I don't know. I think it was the, know, the next I one. Know. I think it's the, I think it's Undiscovered Country. I don't know. Uh, no, remember uh, it's uh, it is Undiscovered Country where he's about to slap the the chick who's supposed to be like the the girl, Sarek or whatever, or the replacement Sarek. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. To, um, he, uh, yeah, he uh, finds uh, out Lieutenant Valeris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good moment, good moment. There's there's a little bit of human rage on, on his side at that point. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, rage and disappointment at Lieutenant Valeris. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't put up with uh, you know incompetence or betrayal. You know, he's a good guy. 
uh, principled like that, you know. Okay. Now you want to do the next question? Oh uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. No, uh, uh, I'm just I'm just trying to find this uh, link to um, um, Spock's. I'm not Spock. I keep saying Spock. What's uh, happening? Uh, Kirk's Kirk's brother oh. and yeah, his nephew Peter. Yeah. Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, speaking to Kirk, um, do you think Will Shatt's uh, direct creative involvement helped or uh, hindered this? Movie? You know, I don't know. I'd look. I, I used to think when I was 21 when this movie came out, or I was in college. I used to think that uh, he completely ruined it. But then I look back with the writer strike going on and in context of everything that's that was happening at like the, the time. Complications and what? But production complications. Yeah, all the production complications. I, I think I think Shat did a pretty good job with it, and it really isn't the problems I have with the movie are not his directing or even the story. It's basically the aesthetics. Uh, again, going back to Cybok and the Klingon commander. Have you ever met him before? No, no I haven't met him. No, no. I've never even seen him from a distance. Would you want to? I, I, I wouldn't care to. You no? Know, yeah. is, is he a nice guy? Do you know? Uh, I don't think he's any... I, I think he's your typical uh, actor. He's got a little bit of an ego. There's a bit of narcissism in there. there. And, 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 you know... Maybe that's what, what makes him... Do what well, actor though. doesn't? You know, what actor doesn't? Yeah. You, to be an actor, you have to have that. The worst combination is an actor who is also a narcissist and also um, has uh, is not confident. What about Gene Roddenberry? Do you know if he was a nice guy? Uh, I think he is. I think I like his ideas. I don't know if him personally on a personal level. Like on set? Much. Do you know how he I, I think he would be. I, I, I would hope he is. Um, everything he's done uh, has been incredible, you know? Everything from, you know, he, he was an Army Air Force pilot. You know, you know, he was an Air Force pilot, just like me. You know, flew heavies, um, loved sci-fi, and fantastic writer with some really good ideas. I mean, he's he's an incredible person, you know? Yeah. Do you wish you could have met him before he died? Not really. I, I, you know me, I'm not big on hero worship and, you know, meeting people and stuff like that. There are very few people I would like to meet. No, but so, like, but, you know, I don't know. It's just for a hypothetical. Like, if you were in, like, a perfect scenario, you could ask him any, like, any one question or whatever, like, you know. Just to ask, just to know, you know what I mean? Just to know no, a little that more. Not hitting me right now about that. You would? No, no, just not. Nothing would enrich no. your enjoyment of anything. His pro his work has enriched my. You know, sometimes you don't want to meet um, your. You know, not, he's not necessarily a hero, but sometimes you don't want to meet him. I've heard, you know, I mean, uh, uh, was it Majel Majel Barrett uh, is his second wife, and I heard that he kind of like cheated on his first wife with her. You uh -huh. know, so. You know, uh, an adulterer is not someone, you know, something you want to associate with someone who's created something like Star Trek, you know? Yeah, but I mean, people are people, you know? Yeah, you know, people, absolutely. Good, you take them for the good and the yeah, bad. And absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, so, you know, I don't need to know that to, to, to appreciate his work. Oh, okay. You know? I don't know. It's like maybe, you know, in the long run, you'd be like, you know, even it's amazing that like he was able to do all this good stuff and still be kind of like a piece of shit or whatever. You know what I mean? That's how you could probably be for a lot of Hollywood people. Yeah, like with yeah. Tom Cruise. I don't know. You know, it's like he's nuts, but yeah. he still manages to get shit done, you know, That's like exactly and, and right. do it competently and still seem sane on screen and, and you know, in, in most interviews and whatnot. That's exactly you know? right. So it's, it's kind of like that. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. It is a personal preference kind of thing, though. Uh, so, so what about this big question uh, of the, the episode? Why do you hate the guy who plays Cybok so much? Like, like really, why do you hate him? We well, talked about it earlier, but no, why I do you don't why, hate him? I hate. Why do you hate the aesthetic? The, the How about aesthetic. that? Why do I you hate know. his aesthetic? Do, do okay. People go, you know, people love that argument. It's like, oh, you're not confident in yourself, so that's why you hate him. You know, it's like, no, I, I, it's not that. It's like I don't need to be a chef. Okay, I don't you know, need to be a world, a Michelin star chef. I don't need to be a barbecue pit master to taste a piece of, you know. A rib or to taste a plate to know that I don't like it, you know, but I may not be able to describe why I don't like it. But try, you know, just try for the sake of it just, trying. I, I just don't like it. I don't like the look once he's in makeup and everything. Like I said, out of makeup and everything, he's perfectly fine. It doesn't bother me at all. But when you put him in, you know, <laughs> you know, when you put him in, you know, those freaking <laughs> robes and the ears and everything, he just looks stupid. Stupid. Okay, how about this? Well, what are some similar examples in other things? Like, I don't know. Is there someone in Indiana Jones you don't like the look of, or Star Wars, or, you know, anything, really? No, 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 no right now. It's, uh, it just hits me viscerally. I, I just don't really? know. Really? Yeah, and I and I, I feel bad even saying that, because it's nothing against the actor. The actors, I have nothing against him. It's just, you put that actor in those robes and the makeup, it just didn't work. Well, okay, so who's worse, though? Is it the Christopher Walken guy, or is it... Uh... This guy, Christopher Lloyd, uh, sorry, Christopher Lloyd, oh, on, or is it this like Doc, this dude? Doc Brown, yeah, Commander Doc Brown? Yeah, yeah, Speed or whatever. Right? Yeah, he's on drugs all the time, and whatever. So is it that guy? Does that guy? Does Christopher Lloyd Klingon? Does he pull you out of the Star Trek more 
Or is it this yes, guy? Yes, uh, Christopher Lloyd. Kirk, I want Genesis. So that's still worse to you? Yeah. You don't want to give it to me? Okie dokie. Well, how, how much worse? What percentage worse? Oh, if you had to do exponentially it like worse. <laughs> exponentially <laughs> worse. You serious? Like, like, like squared worse, yeah. But, you know, in Christopher Lloyd's defense, once Taxi, because Taxi was fresh in my mind at that time. Taxi is now decades away. And the reason Christopher Lloyd didn't work for me is not Christopher Lloyd. It's because his close association with Doc Brown and Jim from Taxi. But now that Jim and from Taxi and Doc Brown from Back to the Future are, are cold memories, and you watch Voyage Home alone, and you look at... Um, Christopher, I mean, I said this in, in our specific review about that. When you watch that alone by itself, he does a really good job. It's not a problem. It's not a problem in 2021. Mm. It was a problem in the 80s. Yeah, but don't you think you're being a little too sensitive, though? No, because you, your your issues and things you hate when you're, you know, 16 years old are not the same things okay. that yeah. are going to bother you. When you're you know, when you're a grown man in your forties, right? Yeah, but you just said it still bothers you, though. No, I'm just saying it just bothers you a little less, but it, it still bothers yeah, you. It, it bothers me a little less. Okay, well, you know. first fair. Everyone has their opinion, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like for me, I don't know. I got to be honest. Like, I, I like these movies, you know, but yeah. I just um, like if I'm being honest, I don't have any personal attachment to them, so no. I don't really. I don't know. Once we're done watching them, I probably won't think about them you know, ever again. That's hey, kind of do you want to hit pause for a minute? What, what's that? Do you think Sean Connery would have made it better, Cyborg? Uh, not necessarily. No. No, I, I don't think so because you know Luckinville is, um, you know, not really a goofy-looking person outside of the Vulcan makeup. But with the Vulcan makeup, it completely changes his, you know, uh, facial structure and everything. And I just think that the same thing might have happened with uh, Sean Connery. So, uh, and then Sean Connery additionally may have uh, his accent right, and his yeah. speech may have been a little bit um distracting who would be your ideal cast for like a spock brother i i you know i, I don't have anyone in mind I, I can't think of one right now you don't think so no I, I i'm just trying to you know I, i'm sure if we actually started uh, looking through uh, actors of that time we might be able to find somebody but just off the top of my head it's so long ago i don't you know i can't figure out who was prominent enough back then do you think the idea of having a spock's brother in a movie you think that's a bad idea to begin with anyway because it's a little bit like that kind of, you know, obsession with like this. It, it always has to be, you know, Kirk and Spock. It always has to be like the Enterprise or something, you know, that kind of thing. How, it, you know, it's always the iconic stuff. Like it can never just be like a new character. It always has to connect to the, I mean, I guess this is still the original, but like, you know, even in the originals, it still has to connect to the icon, like the main cast and stuff. It still has, it, that, that's where they get a lot of the meaning. Do you think that's like a kind of a shortcut for writing? I, I think like, that was a throwaway. I think Spock's brother was a throwaway. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think it could just been a, an emotion, a Vulcan, a Vulcan who, um, cause that would have taken more time to, they would have made it stand on its own. It wouldn't have to, it wouldn't have to, it would, it wouldn't have relied so much on, um, Spock's you know, connection <laughs> you know, guess, the, the, as a crutch or something. Or is it the big, um, the big reveal or the big twist of him being Spock's brother? You know, when they find out in the, um, you know, in the brig, on the Enterprise. You know, it, it kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of like it was a little bit of a shocker, but it just didn't have any real lasting uh, legs. No. You know, yeah, it was, it was just kind of like after the fact. You're just like, yeah. Do you think they could pull it off, or do you think something like that's too kind of like kitschy or whatever to even like bother trying? It might be good maybe for like, or maybe not for like a movie, but maybe for like an episode. It'd be good for like a one-off episode or like a two-parter episode in the original series. As opposed to like a full-length, you know, movie, feature-length film that occupies one of the slots of the main six. I don't know. Um, there's just not enough. I don't have the right words to tell you how this movie just doesn't mean a thing to me. You just know, that, it's so it's, insignificant. It's, it's so, so yeah, minor it's, in the canon. It's forgettable. Yeah, it's just so like a non-entity. I, I, I'm having a hard time just to think of things to say about this movie, good or bad. Yeah, you know. Well, what, well. So here, here's another thing you can think about, though. How about um the the deity? What do you think about the god on the planet? You know, he's really just like some weird celestial prisoner or something, isn't he? You know. Yeah, it, it wasn't that. 
you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, you know? but what do you think the backstory is? Because you know, the, the, they didn't make a big well, whatever, deal. Whatever, whatever you make out of it, you know, that, that, they 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 left, they left that whole backstory and everything for uh, the viewer to decide what he wanted to do. Open with for that. interpretation. Yeah, yeah they, and they do that a lot in the original uh, film series, right? With yeah. the, the whale probe and with the uh, the, the yeah. The where does it picture. come from? You know, who are they? That you know, that it. You know, the, what you can come up with in your mind is is more than what uh, you know a writer can do. You know, or like Vijir in, um, in exactly in the motion yeah. picture. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Those are those are all very similar. It's not so important where and who, but you know, it's you know how they are during that, you know, the, their interaction with the um, the cast and the storyline. Yeah, and um, but so for you personally, like, what what makes Viger a more compelling mystery than um, than the the celestial god in this one? Is it just the writing? Is it the fact that there's a good movie centered around it that you know ingratiated itself to you? And then, then that made you more interested because it was good, and so it's just a matter of quality. Because Star Trek uh, Five isn't good, you don't care about, you know, you don't want to know. I don't know. It's just boring. Um, Viger, um, you know, is is this? You know, we talk about how Cybox, uh, the casting for the Klingon commander, which we should get his name. Oh, uh, the monkey face guy. Mon so. Yeah, monkey yeah. face guy, uh, monkey face uh, scrawny boy. You know, um, start was it Star Trek? Final Frontier Klingon. Claw. Claw? Yeah. yeah. You don't like the actor who played Claw? Oh my god. <laughs> Captain I mean, Claw. Doesn't that look like a Klingon to you though? I mean, it doesn't look like a... It looks like a Klingon to me. I don't know. Even if it's an annoying Klingon, I think it looks uh, he accurate just, he, to the species. Yeah, well, he is. I mean, he's got the ridges. He's got the facial hair, the... You know, but he just, I mean, he looks like, a, um, oh, hell, you know, I mean, he, he looks like Scary Spice. You, think you know, so? yeah. I who mean, who is that? Uh, from the Spice Girls. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, a, that's not who you want to, you know, he's got, it's just, it, it just didn't work for me. I think there's just too much forehead on there. I, you know. <sighs> just a, it bugs you? It's just a facial me. structure yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, and, and the, and the entity bugged me too. What was you the know? entity? The, oh yeah, the yeah, god. The, the god. Yeah. yeah. Well, why'd he bug you though? Just, just bad makeup. I mean, but I, I feel like that one though. That's actually in line with what they were trying to go for because if uh, the chat based it off uh, televangelist, you know, it's like you got to have that kind of sleazy, you know, look. You know what I mean? That kind of like budget, like discount, like used car salesman kind of thing. You know, I, I feel like the the guy who played that did a pretty good job with it, actually. You know what I mean? I feel like it, it fit the aesthetic that they were trying to go for. Anyway. Here's a great example. If you Google images of Todd Bryant, the actor that played him, he doesn't look stupid. It's just the makeup doesn't it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you know, it's just, you know, the, the makeup just makes him look really stupid with that big hair. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it just didn't work, you know? So there, there's, there's no way that you can really articulate like what the, um, I guess. No, the, I, I don't have the words or the ability to, to do Because it is, it's a personal thing. It's a subjective yeah. thing. You know, it just, it just hits you. Yeah, look, he he does not look like a, a stupid you right. know, monkey boy. You know, I mean, he completely. But then, I mean, look at that. Look, look, <laughs> yeah. look how look how different yeah. he looks in, the, in Klingon makeup. I see it. Yeah, I see yeah, it. he's actually a good looking guy. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's. Wow, I, I did not think that he was going to look normal like that. And that 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 was. Um, well, you learned something new. Yeah. Well, so it must be like a certain facial structure or something, then, right? Because who who's the the like. Crew member in um, Next Generation, that guy. Who's Worf. The, yeah. Do you know the actor's name who plays Worf? Um, <sighs> well, you know the actor who plays Worf. Uh, yeah. Do you think he he pulls off the Klingon look? He does. And everything because you have oh, the figure of him, he, so you must like him, right? No, he totally does. Yeah. Oh, that was a gift. But oh, okay. he totally does. But so is it just? It must be like bone structure or something. Then right, it must come down to something like yeah. that, or physique, or just I don't know. Having the right, I guess, the right look. But yeah, facial structure probably would be the most important thing. Because some people, you know, they don't take to the makeup. Oh, it could also be the makeup itself, like the people who designed this specific makeup, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, like like the... Uh, the people who applied it, the the process that went into making it. Sometimes it's not as, you know... Yeah. I guess Like the Dura sisters from the next generation. Those were good looking Klingons. Those look good to you. Those kind of look goofy to me, though, see? So yeah, it, it's also but it might be you, the lighting though. Actually, well, no, one. and it's also you haven't seen them. You, you just see them here in these stills. So in motion, yeah, they, they you, might be yeah. Oh, on, okay. You know when they're when they're moving and everything. You know, I, I, it just didn't work for them. It just didn't work for a claw. No. Yeah.
Uh, well, so, uh, do you think that the, um, so by the way, just an aside, do you think that the, uh, the V'ger in, um, Star Trek uh, motion picture, do you think that's how the Borg were created? Do you think that that, that's what that was maybe? Because that's a theory that was going out there. Yeah, that, that personally, I don't, I don't think so. No? Because, uh, it, you know, between the time of the Borg, uh, you know, is it the next generation? Uh, was it, uh, let's see, motion picture to uh, STNG timeline. Let's look at this. Star Trek. And right, yeah. Timeline. So you're trying to see how many dis how much distance there is between the motion picture and the next generation? Yeah, I think it's like a hundred or something years, right? In the in the fictional timeline. Yeah, in the fictional timeline. Yeah, timeline well, of Star Trek. Here we go. Next generation would be like a century, right? Like each generation is like. I think it's like a hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred and something years later. Let's see, next generation. Uh, um, before the birth of you. Oh my God, what is this timeline? Well, it's because they have all the ancillary stuff on there too, all the miscellaneous. Media. that avoid this. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. Uh, Star Trek Season 1. The motion picture was in 2273. Okay. Okay. And then the next generation was in 2364 it started. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, it's not even 100 years, you know? So let's just say it's, let's say, say it's 100 years. You don't think that's enough time for a civilization or whatever like that to, uh, you know? Establish I, itself to that degree because the extent because they're well, no, the, as well. the Borgs were warlike or they, they they're always about assimilation, right? Right. So there's, you know, you, but so was uh, Vidra though, because he wants to assimilate everything into himself, you know, for well, yeah, information he, he, gathering. He uh, and it would make sense that Vidra would be. I mean, he was capable of making whole, you know, replicas of you, 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 the universe stuff, you know, right. in himself. So he could easily. I mean, it, make it is it is possible. It is possible that whatever civilization that created that uh, assisted Vidra and gave him, you know, the body of the starship and everything, and you know, um, was it augmented him and everything? It's very possible that they could have become the Borg. You know, yeah. yeah I, I, or I that Vidra. I, I just don't. I just. I prefer, I, in my mind, it doesn't work that, you know, I, I like to think of them as a different species altogether. So you don't think V'ger created the Borg, though? Because, I mean, that's what, that's what I meant, because, you know, when they form with the humans and the, and the robot, they merge together, you know, so that, that's, that's what you I was saying. You know what, that, that's, that's, that's... It might have spawned that, and yeah. it might have spawned it by mistake, too. It might have been a derivative thing. It might not even have been, like, a conscious thing, you know? You, know, I don't, you that, don't know that's how the nature of it works. It is. You know, it might be, the Borg could just be excess from, you know, that, that, uh, merging or whatever you know like residual something sure you know like i don't know rain yeah. rain grows plants you know some raindrops fall somewhere and then it creates the borg they just kind of sprout out of nowhere i think that'd be a nice interesting way to connect all the movies and in, in everything eventually but um yeah i, mean, well, I, I guess kind of, I it's kind of like one of those things where you really didn't ever need to see darth vader's face you know but it's it, cool though it, that, that, that's a cool of, one. it's kind of yeah it's, it's kind of better not knowing do you think do you think it's better not knowing darth Vader's for me face? Oh, okay. yeah for me it was Sebastian Shaw, you know, I mean, whatever, nothing against him. It's just Sebastian know. Shaw. Oh, you know, the, Darth, the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not Hayden Christensen. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, it would. It's just, Sorry, yeah. yeah, just didn't. Yeah, didn't didn't need to see that. Well, yeah, how'd you feel about the? Because uh, this movie's boring, so you know. But so how, bored. How'd you feel about um? Did you like the original actor who like just stood stood in for Anakin at the end of the Revenge of the Sith before they? Or no, not not Revenge of the Sith. Jeez, uh, Return of the Jedi. Where before they put in Hayden Christensen in the remake. That's Sebastian Shaw. Yeah, but do you do you like him though? Is what I'm saying. Like, do you like, like him? Do you like him in his full Jedi robes and stuff? Does he look um, cool, or do you, do you feel bad that like they replaced him? Or was it Sebastian Shaw? No, who, who was it? Yeah, see, that's why I was confused. Yeah, Sebastian Shaw's ex. Was it uh, Dave Prowse? Yeah, it was Sebastian Shaw. I think. Oh, so it was not. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, okay. Sebastian yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaw, yeah. Never mind, never mind. But he's also an X Men character. You know, hey, the yeah. my geek cred's not up. So you, you just think it was like a random guy? Like, you don't think that would be like a good look for Anakin though? Before they before they did the prequels and kind of you know fleshed it all out, you don't think that would be like a believable you know like former soldier of the Republic kind of you know war veteran or whatever? Oh, look, they got a young Sebastian Shaw in Jedi robes to see if how he would look as a young Anakin. I mean, he looks like, then look he's, like a, he's like a 30s, 40s, 50s actor. Yeah, and then look yeah. at young uh, Alec Guinness for um, oh, Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? If they made the prequels in the 30s or something, that would be really cool. That, that They would be 
good casting for it. Yeah, they look like uh, actors of their generation, you know, very oh. much. Weird, though. No. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's weird. Jeez. See, that's cool, though. People, someone yeah, came up with yeah. that. I think, he, no, I think he looked good in the makeup, you know, and I think he looked fine as, uh, you know, in his robes and stuff, actually. I don't know. That was a really, uh, that's like one of the my favorite scenes in the whole thing. Well, yeah, thing. It, it, it didn't bother me. So, yeah, I think that's the best compliment that I could pay them and that it, it didn't bother so, me. But, but it didn't, like, yeah. really? It didn't make you feel anything at all? It wasn't like, you know, no. you don't get teared up when you see it, that? This anything? looks better than what they actually filmed. That's like my favorite scene. In, yeah. When you see, that, the this, this, this behind the scenes, but when he's laying down, it's like. So it's a lighting thing or something. That no, looks no. cool to me. That's like, that's one of the most memorable scenes to me, though. That that's when I think of Star Wars. That's what I See, remember. See, that looks cool. But that I, looks cool. But here he looks like a Mr. Potato Head. No, but you no. That's the point, that, though. That he's supposed like to super, look alien. He's supposed to look different. He you looks know? like a super default. He, he's not alien, but you know, he's supposed to look. It's Star Wars. It's supposed to look, you know, non, yeah. not completely human. Like I said, that's the best compliment yeah. that I could I pay. Know. Is that when I saw it, huh. it didn't bother me. Wow. You know? I'm surprised. I don't know. It's like one of the most powerful Star Wars scenes. That, you know. It is. But then also you can go too far where. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, we're going to watch it, right? In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you never see the inside of the UFO. And it keeps the mystique for you? Keeps the mystique. And then the studios insisted that if Steven Spielberg... Um, oh, they went corporate. They're like, you have to do this. You have to right, appeal to the low, lowest common denominator. They're going to let him do a director's cut. And he wanted to clean up a few things because the only way we're going to green light a director's cut is that if you show the inside of the ship. So they had to make a whole set and everything? Yeah, they made you know little miniatures, all this other stuff. And um, does it look good or is it shitty? It's okay, but, but it's not what you wanted it to be. Yeah, it didn't bother it's me. It's not as powerful I, as whatever yeah, you could have come was, up with. Yeah, it was. It wasn't as powerful as what was in my own head. Right. Yeah. You know, and and what they came up with was was, was good. It, it was in the same aesthetic as the outside of the ship. It looked like it was in universe. But it, it, just, it, it yeah. didn't look tacked on. It looked like they had. But you know, in in, in hindsight, I, it was better than that, that we didn't know. But know? it just becomes another thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, wh why though? You know, why, why, why is that? I don't. Such a big I, I deal? can't explain. I'm just telling you how I feel. Mystique. I don't, yeah. So you like Mystique? I guess. Sure. If you want to put a name to it, I guess. I. Why? Why do you feel? Yeah, but you, you don't mind it. You, you don't. You would. So you think it's more powerful? Why for, do you like pizza and you don't like? Well, I don't know. It's you like, know it, why? Why do you prefer like five lines of dialogue that that allude to something that you never see as opposed to seeing the thing? I, like, I can't explain it. Don't make me try to explain. It. I just know that I like something or I don't like something. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. What about um? What about um? Have you heard dancing? You like that? Or do you not like? No, that, that was cringy. No. Why? Why do you think they even put it in there? Like, what was the thought process behind that? You think that was gonna like? Did they think it was hot? Like, she's kind of old. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, did they think it was like? I don't know. Funny maybe, or? Yeah, I, th I think maybe Shatner wanted to you know liven things up and uh, make it a little. Um, what do you call it? You know, a, a little lighthearted. It just doesn't yeah. make sense on any level, though. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, hey, we, we can distract them because you know they haven't seen a woman in a long time. You know. Yeah. Oh, you know, I guess. Yeah. You know. And, yeah. And we, don't, and we don't have to kill them. You know, we don't have the firepower to overwhelm. We don't, and we don't want to draw. You know, we don't want to have phaser fire to draw attention to. You know, inside. Uh, you know. Uh, um, you know, the, was it, you know, poor man's Moss Eisley or whatever you wanted, whatever you were calling it. Yeah, yeah, budget tattooing. Yeah, budget tattooing. So, you know, so, the, you know, that that's a way, that's a way to do it, you know, without drawing phaser fire and, you know, getting, uh, you know, uh, tipping off the, um, the, what do you call it, the hostage shakers. Right, yeah. Know, but point. it's just, it's cringy though, you know, it's like, if you have a character who's spent their whole, like, life or whatever, their whole fictional lifetime as like a dignified kind of military person, personnel, you know? And then they have this stupid ass well, dance. Yeah, it's just cringy, I don't know. Yeah, just everybody stupid. has their own hidden freak, so that, that's, that's a horror. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a hidden freak? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever played that game in the the fake moth guys, My Slice League 2, where all the, the three diplomats were? Remember, at the, you know, that pool table, it's like a bunch of lights. You ever played that game, the, the light game? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, was that, that in water, too, or something? Yeah, it was, it was like in water, and it had like a bunch of lights, and that was that's future pool. That's yeah. pool in the, you know, the yeah, 23rd no, no, century. No. <laughs> or like in Star Trek, uh, the motion picture, remember when he's showing the robot version of that bald girl around? And uh, oh, he's really like, he points at the thing, it's like tic-tac-toe on the floor or something. It's like yeah. neon tic-tac-toe. You ever played that before? Yeah. No, you know why? Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, it's like how in, um, well, the next one, you know, Star Trek 
six, it's like they just kind of have random things that they shove in. I wonder what that was in real life. Like, I wonder if it was like a thing from something else or if they just slapped a bunch of like glow sticks together or something. You know what I mean? Some weird thing like that. Yeah. <laughs> the game doesn't have to make sense. You know, when they come up with these games for movies, they don't. Or like 4D rules. chess or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. 3D or, chess. Or 3D chess. People play that. Or is it 4D? I, you know what? I don't know. People play it, but it's just a, you know, it's just a prop. It's just a cool looking prop, you know, but then they try to come up with rules with it, you know, to it. But well, they, they never yeah. had rules to begin with. And, and, and like I think, um, you or, know, Hollow Chess doesn't have rules in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. because it's just supposed to be a bunch of things like yeah. fighting each other. And, yeah. and then you're supposed to just assume that there's rules, you know. And and, and part of the fun is just you know the only one know, out of knowing any... the, the knowing you know the part of the fun is not knowing the unknown. You know? Right. Well, the only one out of any of those like kind of fake games that, well, at least to my knowledge, that I know the, the most the most prominent example is Harry Potter because in Harry Potter the chess is just the pieces are just alive, but it's regular chess. The only difference is that they just they destroy each other, so right, you know, and then you just you have to buy new ones. Well, and I, I, I think they didn't even they haven't even fleshed out all of um, the Quidditch rules until oh you know, Quidditch, later. yeah. yeah. And, well, and then they did it too, and then they made video games and stuff, and it's like it, yeah. it's playable, fully functional Quidditch, and, and well, people play it in real life. I yeah. think that's kind of too much. I think it's a little extra to have like a college Quidditch league or whatever. But the video game's fun, and, and they they put when, it when in every video game too. Pretend that you're flying, you yeah. Know? yeah. Quidditch, yeah, I don't know, it's cool. Th- does Star Trek have a fictional sport like that? You know, what I mean, like you have in Final Fantasy X, you have that like uh, hypo. Hi- 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 I don't even know why I brought it up. I don't even know what it's called, but um, yeah, I think hypo ball or whatever. Yeah, I think there are there are uh, fictional um, Star Trek games, Star Trek sports. Blitzball, you know, they have Blitzball in in Final Fantasy X. They have Hollow Chess in Star Wars. Be- yeah, you don't know if there's an iconic. Well, I mean, there is the four D chess, three D chess, but you don't know if there's like a team sport. Do, do well, they, there is. Do you know if sports are important? See, fictional in, um, Star Trek sports. Fictional. Because I, I don't know if that's something that like Roddenberry sports. or someone else uh, kind of phased out. Because you know, money's not a thing. Currency's not a thing in the new Star Trek. You know, in that. that yeah, and they, so. and, they, and they don't tell you what it is. I wonder if they have sports. Oh, they have Parisi squares. Oh my god, I, I, I forget all these shit. You ever played that before? No. Parisi squares. That was a big Dabo. That's a card game, I think. Gambling game. So yeah, like so, cards, just yeah. Pretty C squares is a vigorous athletic game mentioned in several episodes of Star Trek: The Next Generation and Voyager. It is implied that the game involves a high risk of serious personal injury. Nevertheless, much to the concern of parents, the game is quite popular with teenagers during the 24th century. The game involves the use of a piece of equipment called an ion mallet and a ramp, huh. and the players often wear special padded uniforms. Do you ever play any of those like uh, Star Trek RPG? You know, like tabletop. Uh, I'm trying to think. It'd be a good universe to like have stories no, uncle, like that. Your uncle does. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, well, excuse me. Um, I think it's Starfleet Command or Starfleet Tactics or whatever. They're, they're you know you use uh, starship pieces and stuff, and you know it's like that X-wing game that we played. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Same idea. So it's about just going out in space. You, yep. you, know, you take yeah, Star Trek battles or something. I can't remember yeah. what it's called. Yeah, those are pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, between the Star Trek and Star Wars universe, which one like seems more fleshed out to you in terms of like you know world building and stuff? Like which one seems Ooh. more livable? Star Trek. I was I was gonna say Star Wars was really good. Um, Even though it's a space fantasy as opposed to like a science yeah, fiction. But I think Star Wars was really good until uh, until the uh, sequels. But but no. The, don't don't count the sequels. You know what I mean. Count yeah. real star like real good faith Star Wars. So yeah, the, everything up to the prequels. You know the original. You know um, Knights of the Old was Republic good, and stuff. And then the prequels were good. Uh, as far as far as world building, yeah, they were they were good. There's 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 a lot of because um, right, you know Clone Wars makes up for a lot of it. Yeah, you know? they they were able to redeem it because there were working parts. There were good. There was good stuff to be had in there. Just the movies were not yeah. you know, executed properly. But then again, at the same time, without the movies, you wouldn't even have that. Uh, that chapter of the Star Wars universe, and that—that's the good thing. That, that's, that's what I like about um, the prequels. It's impressive, you know, how they were able to take you know this Star Wars universe and then uh, reinvigorate it, make it kind of their own thing, but at the same time, it still feels like Star Wars. You know, even if it's not like be- the best Star Wars, it's still good. You know, sure. The only thing that's bad about it is the movie itself. Like you, you, you don't complain about. You, you might people might complain about the universe itself. You know, like they might not just like the 
I don't know, midichlorians, that was a big debate, you know, because... Did not bother me. Midichlorians did not bother me. You know, me. midichlorians, though, and, and maybe the arrogance of the Jedi, people might have been put off by that, you know, because it's kind of a hard concept to swallow, thinking of how... I, I thought the uh, arrogance of the Jedi was... Uh, oh, I think it's great. It's was, one of the was, best parts. Yeah, it was crucial in showing their downfall, you know? But then, you know, some they, people they, might just not like uh, the clones either. Just, you know, there, there are some concepts from the prequels that people I might did not just like. like I, no, I, I like the idea of the clones. I didn't like the fact that they they were too ambitious with the CGI. I don't think that, you know, I, I, that's why the Mandalorian has gone back to real um, practical filming models. Right, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a certain look that real material objects can give you on film. Well, they've kind of you made know. like a, a happy compromise because now they have those like... Yeah, uh, they've come full circle. 360 things. They, yeah. they, they're able to marry it properly. Yeah. But no, um, see, though you, you just said you know you, you were you were talking about the the CGI, you know the the execution itself, the film. See, so people don't really, most people don't really have a problem with the concepts in the prequels. It's just the way that they were executed. See, so when you think of the prequels, people don't really have a problem with the universe. I mean, of course, not every this isn't true for everyone. It's just generalization. But it's you know it's the fact of the matter is people get complained about the movies themselves. You know, yeah. themselves themselves. Well, and George R. Binks. Yeah. That's that too, but I mean, hey, I don't know. And, if, and the droid factory scene. Well, hey, if the if the C three PO swapping heads and that, I thought that was actually pretty funny. But, uh, you know, when I was a little kid when I watched it. Cringy. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I still think it's funny and like an, you know, <laughs> it has it has that kind of charm to it, like uh, well, Batman, that, Batman that, and Robin and that, stuff like that. Yeah, that that. That was a that that was a home run for <laughs> he puts on the heads. Yeah, that was a whole home run for well, you. Well, I, I thought it was cool because I don't know, it just it was like oh, so like they can. I thought that was a little bit of weird universe building in a way because it's like you know they can actually even though those are different models and makes and stuff made by different you know because think about it, Anakin you know C three PO is just something that some kid on Tatooine made yeah. but then this this Geonosian completely different species completely different planet like C three PO can still put his head on like those those parts are still somewhat compatible. You know, I thought that was like weird. I was like, huh? You know, like he can actually kind of because it's fan, it's, it's, sci it's, fan match. it's sci fi fantasy. Yeah, well, I, just, I thought that was a little neat, but um, like people get butthurt about uh, hyperspace skipping, mm. and I thought that was a, kind of a neat idea. It's like, oh, you know, we're just gonna make stuff up now. You know, it's just like, well, they always uh, it, it, it was it was up. made yeah, it was made whole, up from the beginning. Exactly, that's kind of what it is. I, I thought that was an interesting for, for, thing for uh, fans to get upset about, especially as such a techno fan that i am you know well i'm surprised that people would Didn't even bother get me mad about it because it's one of those kind of niche things anyway you know yeah. like it would fall, fall by, by the wayside for most people but i guess it is the the super hardcore fans who get the mad mad the most and that's what they're there for you know that's how fandom survives well that, that, that was a problem with um, people's passion you know, however misguided it can be at times you know yeah I mean? well that was the problem with star trek jj uh, abrams completely disregarded you know all the um, techies. No, because he was a Hollywood type, and he couldn't care yeah. less. Yeah, he just wanted to. Yeah, the Enterprise didn't it was have just to make a job for him. Yeah. Side, uh, you know, it didn't have to make sense size wise or anything. Nope. He didn't have to stick with the established universe. In fact, he kind of, you know, he showed his disdain for the established um, Star Star Trek universe. No, because he thinks he's above it. You know, he doesn't want to deign to a bunch of people in their parents' basement or whatever. You know, that whole thing. Yeah, so. and, and and he he was trying to come in and you know. Um, you know, was it? Um, it was just another drop room. Uh, was it? You know, he was not, not Michael Moore, but um, Michael Bay. No. Uh, what's his name? Ronald Moore. You know, he 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 thought he could throw. He could pull Ronald Moore with Battlestar Galactica. Oh, well, you know? what's that? Uh, for the well, audience, you know, yeah, what's the context well, for Ronald that? Moore came in and. Um, you know, and Ronald Moore, he's like a screenwriter or something. Uh, okay, uh, well, producer director, I guess, of the of uh, the new Battlestar Galactica versus the original seventies Battlestar Galactica TV show, and he came in and just completely um, new Bat Galact. You know, you know, we call it new BSG and new BSG. You know, in the original Battlestar Galactica, it's just BSG. But you know, he came in and uh, with new BSG, just completely shit on all the original fans. Um, with all the race swapping and all the gender swapping and everything, and his and I was in like 2004, right? So that was something like that. Yeah, and, yeah, and his excuse, which was a lame ass excuse, um, was that oh, well, we just wanted to make it more uh, inclusive and you know for uh, so race and yeah, yeah. you know race and uh, sex and it was it, that disingenuous uh, diversity and inclusion before it was like a big well. Thing here's now. a problem. Before it was the, the Battlestar Galactica was already right inclusive. Well, it's like how they, they had female warriors in the '70s show. They had 
uh, Colonel Ty, who was a uh, black second in command. They had uh, Boomer, who was uh, you know a black Viper pilot. They right. had Cassiopeia. They had Athena. They had all these female warriors already, so they didn't need to do any of that. Well, it's probably intersectionalism, you know. Well, he wanted to do. I would have respected him more, and I would have been a fan had he just said, "You know what? I just kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit, and this is how I, you know, I like wanted, if he just I, had different." Tact. Even if he, he doesn't believe it, even if it's in the interviews, he can think whatever he wants behind the scenes. But as long as he says something like, I don't know, just, yeah, this is he, a different vision. This is a reboot. It doesn't matter. You know, it's, this is separate from the original. So you can still enjoy the original. I wanted, I wanted to play around with it and see how it would play out this way. Right. Because I, I thought one of the genius things that he did was make uh, Apollo and Starbuck um, male and female versus so, just two men. You so know. you like that, but it's still annoying because it's the Yeah, the, people the can intent. tell me to get over it. I, I don't need to get over it because it's me and it's, it's my business and it's none of their business. You know, had so he, you don't like the moral blackmail or whatever? Or like the, the shaming nah. the shaming or whatever? No, you know? I, I'm, just, I'm just saying he, you know, he, 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 his reasons were um, weak. You know, you know, had he just been honest about it, and then I would have um, probably watched it, uh, finished the whole three seasons or whatever you know yeah well you know it's like how in um they did you know in the, the witcher the original novels and everything the polish novels you know there was a short story called the lesser evil and it was about like an evil witch basically and and she's it's basically about the cycle of evil you know it's like she she's kind of an anti-hero but not then she becomes a, a straight-up villain you know she's a sympathetic villain rather right bad things happen to her but then so she ends up doing bad things and and you know, because bad things happen to her, she turns evil, and then she decides to basically she she decides to kill a whole town. But before she can do it, you know, um, the Witcher comes in and stops her. But um, the okay. whole the whole point of that, the moral of the story there is that uh, evil is evil no matter what. You know, evil begets evil. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter even if you're justified in in being evil. Okay. Supposedly, okay. It doesn't make a difference. You can't do it. You know, you just don't do it. Just it's not worth it. All right. Um, but they took that out of the, uh, the Netflix series or whatever with Henry Cavill because they wanted to make that woman, like a, that female character, a mentor to Henry Cavill to make, to get those woke points. See, they completely derailed a, a perfectly good story with a perfectly powerful female character who is a villain, but they couldn't have that because, you know, they needed it, they needed it to be sympathetic in like the most bland sense. You know, they needed that stupid bullshit. So they reworked an entire story. They, they missed that, um, source material. They just skipped over it entirely to rework the, the story for that audience that they think exists okay. out there. So you see what I mean? Yep. A lot of, a lot of dismantling things like that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of the issue with, um, intersectionality, you know, okay. you, you ever heard of intersectional feminism, you know, it's, yeah. it's how they, they say everyone has to be the same and you know, everyone should be like a gray identityless blob, <laughs> you know, no, I it's, it's true that. You know, like how, um, well, it's like how, you know, Michael Spock, for example, acts like, uh, Mikey Spock acts like uh, a dude, you know, a lot of uh, people, a lot of female characters in Hollywood act very masculine now, like, uh, you know, Equalizer, perfect example, Equalizer with Queen Latifah as an action star, you know, she can't even kick a door down, you know, she can't even lift her leg like three inches off the ground, but they made her an action star because they wanted her, they wanted to, you know, have, they wanted to show that a woman can do everything a man can do, you know. Even though she could have been a, a tactical mastermind or whatever, you know, like a Sherlock Holmes type, that would have been more well, effective. See, I disagree more with uh, Michael Burnham's character in Discovery because um, he, he, this is this is your problem. You you haven't even watched it. You've just been listening to Neurotic and all. Well, the I don't want to. I don't want to watch it though. You it's, it's like well, you don't even know what you're talking about. But I've seen she clips. Does, though. I've no, seen she clips. doesn't even act like a dude. I don't even know where you're seeing that. She and I, I've watched every single episode of all three seasons, she does, and I ne I never ever got the vibe. That she was trying to be a dude. I don't know. I, I don't know. actually the opposite. I was thinking, you know, uh, me and um, some other people share this opinion where it's like she's very, you know, uh, even Erdrotic shares about it. It's like, oh, everything's an emotional hallmark, hallmark, hallmark movement. And we're crying, you know, in the, oh, in, uh, in, crying, in, always? Yeah, crying always. Yeah, crying always on the decks. So it's like, so you know, Nerd Roddick has got to have, he's gonna have to make up his mind: is she a dude or is she a woman who's always crying? Well, it could be both. I mean, that's how bad it is. That's how I think I bizarre that the bad. writing is. I don't know. I, it looks pretty bad to me. I, it looks bad to me. That's my own opinion. It looks it, awful. Well, it, it, it you know what? That, and that's 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 the, the Klingons look stupid. They look like orcs or something. They look like discount, you know, budget store, dollar store orcs to me. Not like Klingons at all, you know. The aesthetic, it's all blue lens flares. It's like just, and it's, it's everyone, everyone sucks up to her. I mean, did you see the ending episode where like everyone tells her that she's right? You know, like the captain's like, I'm sorry, I didn't see it earlier, Mikey Spock, but you were right. I'm going to promote you to like 
top of the, the Starfleet, you get your own crew and everything, and then they all dress up like you communists mean, at the you end. You mean the chief of Starfleet operations told him? Yeah. I, I, I think... You've never heard of the victim's journey? That's pretty much what it is the whole time. It, the, the whole thing is just, it's that's her journey. She's not a hero. She goes from being right at the very beginning and no one believing that she's right to being right and then everyone finally accepting that she's right at the end. That's exactly how it is, though. I, 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 no, once no, I heard that, I see it. It, it no, is absolutely there. It's not. She is right, but she's not at the same time. But they wrote it that way, though. It didn't have to be written that way is the thing. Well, that's... You're, you're fine you, with it because of the logic, but it's still... Do you have, do you, do you have it's a still contract? Do, do you have a SAG contract? Do you have a writer's contract to write your own show? No. You don't. So, that's, so until you do... You know, that's the way they chose to write it. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that really uh, devalues my opinion, though. It's like, if you're a consumer, it's like, this is how no, it is. No, but you know? I don't. They I, wrote it for people to watch it. It is your opinion, but it's based on you never, ever having watched the I've show. Se- I've watched it. Yes, no, I have. have I've, seen, I've seen clips. I've seen you see certain clips. episodes. No, you do not understand it. You cannot go into, you cannot go into... Uh, Star Wars, the last Star Wars movie, go, oh, Star Wars sucks. It's all bad. Because then you have skipped night, you know, you've skipped a new hope, you've know. skipped Empire Strikes Back, you've skipped, you know, you cannot just I don't go think that's into, analogous though. You cannot just go into Rise of Skywalker and go, oh yeah, Star Wars is a crappy franchise. I, I I don't think that's analogous at all though, because I've seen I, the six original Star Trek films and I, I think they're all right. They're not my favorite thing in the world, but I think they're good. I think they're right. pretty so well you written. You cannot go into seeing a fifteen minute clip of Discovery and yeah, go but the you whole can. three seasons. You can because guess what all this stuff is? It's all products. It's all fantasy no, pretend you, made for entertainment. So you know if it doesn't appeal to you, that means it's 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 you know it's not doing its job. If it if uh, I if I look, maybe, maybe that's just me personally, but it's like if I look at it and I go, God damn, this is a piece of shit. I'm not gonna waste my time watching the whole thing. So if I if a person goes in, and that's you, how bad it is. Now, that's how per- bizarre it is. If a person goes in and watches just Final Frontier, after, you know it's, uh, Star Trek Five. I don't think it's then, the same. Then, then, then they have then they have the, the complete idea of what all the rest of the movies are about. I don't think it's the same because it's this new terrible generation of like you know political activist uh, Hollywood types or whatever you know making things. It's just you know I, I it's come on dude like I don't know it's just it's not no you're, you're completely I, I I have to disagree you're completely wrong there there are cringy things about Discovery and there are thing you know there, there are completely you know things that you, exactly what you're talking about but they are. So that's enough for me to not watch it, though. If it's there, I'm not going to, you know, that's, that, that, but that's just me. See, so I, I know that it's not there. I'm not going to give it any sort of good grace or good faith. I don't care if I'm wrong in this situation. I'm just saying, I don't, you know, if, if that stuff is there, if the woke garbage is there, then I'm not going to, I don't care. Well, you know, I, I am the same way with Battlestar Galactica. You know, well, see, I, so it's I, just I, different I, strokes no, for different but folks. I, I, but I at least watched it before I formed my opinion. I watched the hey, entire man. first season. And I admit that it's a better show than the 70s show. I admit that it's better written. I admit that it's more compelling. It holds together better. Okay. But it's not my Battlestar Galactica. And you do not have that. You do not have the chops and the credibility to make that statement. When, okay. you, when you never have, when you have never ever, ever sat through an episode, let alone a whole season. All right, well. I, 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 I sat through it. And yet I admit that it is better than the original Battlestar Galactica. But my problem is with the BS, you know, uh, logic that Ronald Moore had to say about the race swapping and the gender swapping versus him going, this was my vision and I like to see it this way and I want to see how it played out. Okay. I would have watched all three seasons had he just admitted that. But on all the, it, on all the interviews, he goes, oh, I wanted to make it more inclusive. I wanted it to, to reflect, you know, modern, you know, women and, you know, ethnicity in the armed forces. I'm like... Did you even watch the original? It was already there. So your mm. reason is BS. Right, but you know. He didn't say that he just wanted to be indulgent and go his way. And he said that I'd be like, oh, I, I'm along for the ride. I want to see, I want to see what your vision is. But you 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 you're trying to parrot this, you know. No, I'm really thing. not. No, no. no. He, Ronald Moore is trying to, you know, trying oh. to be all woke and, you know, uh, basically virtue signaling that, you know, oh, he's trying to make it all inclusive and making it you know, modern and making it, you know, and it's not, it's like he didn't need to do that because it was already done in 1979. Yeah, well, you know. You know. Well, well, look, I'm, I'm not trying to win the argument. You know, I'm not trying to turn you over to Jesus or anything in this. I'm just, I'm stating my personal opinion. This is how I feel. This is my sentiment, you know, and I'm serious. No, no, what do you, t- what do you mean? I'm not trying so, to win any argument. You're the winner of this argument here. There's no winning. I'm just saying you cannot make, you cannot say. But I disagree though, you know. 
I, no, I do. The, the, you, it doesn't matter. Of all you, the you things, you cannot well, make on. an assessment. It's it's not politics. How about that? It's this isn't politics. You know, this you know, is this is a, this isn't like saying. Okay, you yeah. know, I don't have to. You know, I don't have to. You know, <laughs> you know, eat a piece of shit to know that it, it's gross. This is not the same thing. Yeah, it is. No, it, it's it not. absolutely is. Okay, look, listen. This isn't politics. This is entertainment. This is stuff you do in your spare time after your day job. You know, after no, your your your, your argument is that you're not you, listening though. You can't. I, I have, have to make I my have, point. No, though. Your, I, I'm your not point, even done talking. Your point is, is is wrong because if you say I just don't like it, then your point is 100 percent correct. What you're saying, I'm is not that, saying. I think it's correct for me. I guess it's my truth. But what I'm saying is that I just don't. I don't. This is my personal opinion. I'm not trying to say it's an objective fact. No, no, no. Factual your opinion thing. is yours. Your, opi- your opinion. It's how the, I feel. The, the, it's yeah, subjective. Your how opinion I feel. and yes. how you feel and the subjective subject, subjectivity of how you look at everything is always 100% correct because it's your opinion. So it's always 100% correct. So it's not about me saying you're wrong. What I'm saying So what do you take wrong, issue with? I'm taking it. It's like you're saying it's, it does all this. It does all this. It virtue signals. It because you don't even know because you never watched it. You watched little clips, and then now you've labeled the entire franchise. Because the, but those clips are part of it, though. That's all part no, of the same thing. No, but you miss the other things where they don't do that. Like you keep but saying, it's still, like, but yeah. oh, she tries to be a man, and it's like, well, okay. So think about it like this. I don't know. It's like I watched it. She doesn't try to be a man at all. But it's okay. Well, if you want to go back to she clips. has awful hair. Okay, <laughs> aesthetically. Her her hair is is a crime, uh, you know, is a crime to my eyes. You know, is an assault yeah, to my eyes. That's in the whole you know, show. Yeah, just like it's Cy, a just like Cy, just like it's Cyborg a and Claw look like, um, you know, Commander Claw look idiotic. You know, Michael Burnham's hair is just stupid. You All, know, well here, here's what I'll say. You know, it's like it, this is entertainment. Okay, again, this is entertainment. It's it's not politics. You know, I don't need to have I don't need to have a valid you know opinion on it if I you know. I, I feel like you don't need to have a valid opinion on it for for entertainment, you know, for entertainment purposes, because it's not politics. There are not like real things at stake here. It's it's whether a company you know gets another viewer or, or not. That's the that's the only thing on the table here. So I I don't feel like you know out, out of all the the arenas in life, this is not the one where I need to have you know humility, some sort of humility or something. I need to have some sort of you know like I gotta come into this, give it a chance, and be like you know I, I don't know kind of diplomatic about it it's like no it's entertainment it's like this is what you come to after you work or uh you know nine to five you come home you know you just want to relax there's only so much of that free time that you have to to spend why would you spend it watching something that's that has those woke it's like you know think about it like this why would you rather just eat a normal cake without a piece of dog shit in it or, or would you eat a piece of would you eat a cake that has that, that was baked with a piece of dog shit in the middle of it or would you rather eat a regular cake? You know, you only have time to eat one. Are you going to eat the one with poop in it? With but but it's fine because you know there's it's not all made out of poop. There's just a little bit of piece of poop no. in there. Or would you rather eat the one that doesn't I, have poop? I in it? don't disagree with you on that one. You know what I mean? But I think. But I'm just talking about this is my opinion though. I'm not saying that I'm right. It, you know, your so. opinion is based on other people's opinions. You do not. Have your own opinion. No, but I've seen. No, again, you, I, I I know you. I, you I've grown up. Okay, you, you've grown up under my house. I know you. You, as of recently, have not had your own opinion on many things. You've been your opinions have been shaped by listening to YouTubers and other people, and you make opinions on things that you have never ever experienced. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I know, you know that's what you're trying to say, but I'm about what I'm that's saying. What, you know, it's like, you know, you don't, you don't. You, you have very few of your own original opinions. No, but no, no. Well, 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 where's that coming from? No, no, because what you're saying, you you don't think that it's uh, valid to just watch clips and be all right with that. I don't. And what I'm saying is that... Because you the, miss out on the total picture. <laughs> no, no, but yeah. the clips are still part of it is what I'm saying. The clips are still, that's still in that, that's still part of that entity. You know, just, I don't know. It's like, I, I wouldn't want to be friends with someone who tells me, you know, I, I bump into them at a party. They tell me to go fuck myself and, you know, I hope your mother dies or something. But That's then tomorrow, different. the next morning, it's like, hey, hey, what's going on, man? Like, they're like a completely different person. No, it was just because they were That's drunk that night. Different. That's still that's still that same person, you know? That that person because who was drunk that have, night is the same person as the person he was the day have, after. If you have just the broth of, you know, pho, we love that. And then you have just the rice stick noodles, which are kind of like, eh, nope. you know, you have to have them together. They complement each other. It's a balance, you know, and you can't just say. Well, maybe the reason I don't uh, buy that argument, though, is because, you know, we, I tried to watch Mad Men with you and you didn't, you didn't couldn't get past the first episode. And I told you, like, the first episode isn't that very that, that good. And then you didn't want to watch anymore. You just weren't interested. Same, same yeah. thing with me. It's just a subjective thing. You know, yeah, that's, that, no, that's not what you're saying. That, what you're saying is like me saying, you know, me making a complete observation 
about um, what, what's what what's Madman's? Uh, but you you still name? dismissed Donald, it too. Donald, what what what? What's what his Don name? Draper? Yes. Don Draper. Me saying, oh, Don Draper. Don Draper is a homosexual. And you're like, where am I getting that? Oh, that one no, scene where no, he's, no, no, you know, no, no, you know, it's like he, he's, you know, it's like you, you're making these broad. No, it's statements not. It's not about factual inaccuracy. It's um, it's you. It you, is factual inaccuracy. No, because you, it's the same thing though. Come on, be honest. No, no, no. I am being honest. I just don't like the aesthetic of Madman, but I don't make any judge. I don't make any calls. Like you still making, dismiss it though, because you just don't like it. But no, that's I don't fine. dismiss it. I I say it's fine for you. I just don't like that genre. It, I, I get nothing out of it. I, it actually, it's work for me, and it's like torture for me to watch it. Okay. okay. Well, so but, it's but I'm not saying Don Draper's trying to be a woman. You know, I'm not trying to say Don Draper is winning the. You know, he he's uh, he's a doctor and he practices. You know, uh, orthodont you know orthodontics on the side. Well, how do you why are you saying that? That's not even true. Oh, I, I saw it on a YouTube video. and Somebody said that. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what you're saying about you know Mikey Spock, and you you don't even know Mikey Spock. You got that term from freaking nerd rock. Yeah, well, why you why do you say that? Like that's a bad thing though. Like I, I because watch you not come yeah, up with I, your own opinion. You're listening to somebody talk about his opinion, and you're parodying it as, as your own versus going through and going. You know, because if if you were just to say you know, I don't like this show, I don't like the show, I don't like the way. You know the characters look. I don't like the aesthetic. I'm like, in the discussion. Absolutely. Well, okay, well then you. fine. I'll say that. Then. But it's also true that it, no, it's not. It is in it though. I've seen the clips, man. I've seen the clips. You see the clips. Okay, well, yeah. you know what? Fine. I mean, that's just and okay. How about this? It's my personal opinion that I think that I I see that shit in it, and maybe you don't see it in there, and maybe it's just a thing that bugs me personally, you know. And maybe my opinion has been influenced by certain people, but it doesn't matter. You know, I, I don't see that as a bad thing. That's not necessarily a negative because, again, this isn't literature. You know, it's like I pick my own writers. I read my own books. You know, I, I cultivate my own tastes there and with film, you know, but not with this. It's because yeah, it's just, you know, again, you it's, know why? Because I saw clips. It's Star Trek. I'm not interested in Star Trek anyway, so I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm not that interested in it. So it doesn't, and it's here, entertaining. Here's, here's, it doesn't bother here's me. Here's my example. This you. is what I'm supposed to be doing for fun. I don't have to cultivate my own. Here's my a, example to you a curator about everything. There's two you know? things. I don't know. There's two things. That are actually are very similar to this. There was this show, B BBC show that your mother wanted to watch. It was called Happy Valley. Okay. And it's about um, you know the protagonist is a female police officer, and it, and it looked like this whole you know old woman in power thing and blah 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 and all this other stuff. You know. And I sat down and I watched it and I was hooked because it didn't come off anywhere what it looked like on the trailers or you know what people were saying about it. And it was, and had I not actually sat down and watched it, I would have, hey, that's your mom's to die Pepsi. She said I could have both. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I would have never been able to enjoy that movie. Okay. And then also, if I had listened to Nerd Rodney. Is it a show or is it a movie? It's a show. Oh, okay, sorry. And it has some of the most powerful, um, uh, strong women without them being... You know, so it's, or, it's organically written. It's organically written. Well, it's exactly. natural. And you don't look at it as like, oh, this is a woman's, you know, this is a woman cop drama or anything like that. You're just looking at, at their cops, you know, and it's just like, it, 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 it's, it doesn't hit you over the head with anything and it doesn't try to send a message. Okay. But, you know, you watch it and you're like, but if you had, you just watched the uh, the commercials on the trailers for it, you would have, it, it, it's not, it's the, the show is not like that. What's another show we like on? She's gone. She's in the bathroom. Oh. She's not in the living room anymore. Well, I, I feel like you're really hung up on this neurotic, neurotic thing. Like you just really because, don't like this guy, though. That's no, it's like you, I don't you see like that as a fact, negative. Right? I don't. I don't like the fact. Let, let's do it like neurotic. Yo, I don't like the fact that you just okay, don't okay, have your okay, own right. opinion because all the time you're just parroting oh what he's God. saying. Okay. Yeah, all right. see that? That's listening to neurotic. That, that's his videos. It's not his live streams. <laughs> And that's his personal hey, style, and it's a completely subjective thing too. So hey, I don't know. What, I, what I, was that uh, British uh, cop God, show man. that we liked? Um, the recent one. Um, oh, what was it called? Just talk. You can talk. I mean, you're not like a, you know. I know. What what was the show called, hon? Where they where they killed uh, my favorite character the last season? Oh God. They had uh, oh jeez. Star Trek. It was a British cop show. It was. Oh my God! Whatever. What was it? Star Trek Discovery is a, is a is a mess though. It is a narrative and, and writing mess. It's a screenwriting mess. It's or whatever you want to call it. I don't. 
I've yeah. seen I've seen clips, and that's I'm serious. Like I don't think that that's that invalidates my argument at all. Uh, it, it, you don't have not when it comes, but th- when it comes to okay, you look, you cannot write a review of, of a movie you've never seen. You, that, that, that doesn't go in any profession. You cannot write. Well, cannot it's a, go well, it's a good thing that I'm not a professional then, because you know I don't know. No, you can have an opinion over trailers, over clips, but you cannot have a, an opinion over an entire piece that you have not seen. You could say I don't want to see it from what I've seen. You can absolutely that's 100 percent valid, but you cannot say that you know you you cannot say oh. You know, someone cannot, if you're a teacher or if you're somebody else, a student cannot write a review on you just going, oh, I walked by his classroom and I just, you know, because I just don't like the way he looks and well, everything. I don't like it. He, he's a crummy teacher. You can't say that. You can't. That, how I feel like you, you can say it about entertainment, though. Because, again, there's only, I, I stand by that. There's only so much time that you have to, to choose the entertainment that no, you No, and you can say, and you can 100% say it doesn't interest me. It doesn't look like anything that I would want to watch. Yeah, Why I would I clip- waste my time? But you can't say Michael Burnham's character, she's trying to be a man this whole time. Oh, but that's fine. You know, you can't say that because you didn't watch the whole thing. You can't say that she spends three seasons trying to pretend that she's a man. Okay, fine. I don't you know. know. You I cannot guess, say okay. that. I guess my ignorant ass thinks that uh, Michael no, Burnham is a girl. No, you're taking this personally girl. when I'm just telling you the truth. The truth of the matter is you can't say that this whole show is about something. You cannot God. say that when you don't watch the whole show. You can say the clips I watched we're okay. all about something. All right, you can fine. say okay. that. All right, you can't okay. say the whole show is it when you when you haven't watched the whole show. There there is, you know, basically there is a thing called, you know, basically it's the components and the whole are different than the individual parts. You know, you cannot, you know, if you're just listening to a symphony and you're yeah, just listening to the Yeah, some of the parts are greater than the whole or whatever. I would fucking exactly. You know, but you can't listen to a symphony and just listen to the guy in the kettle drum and go, "Oh, that sucks." It's just one guy going, "Dong, dong, dong, dong." You're not hearing everything else that's going on in the symphony. You know, mm-hmm. you have to listen to it as a whole. Uh, I still don't agree, though. Not not with some things. Not with some things. Because the no, symphony is designed can... to be, you know, you and have to so have all the parts. Are, so are... No, I don't know. You don't, you don't, you know, people no, don't. It, there's Ray... no one who's going to agree with you on that one. Pragmatically speaking, Everybody's people don't, I don't know. going to agree with you saying that you don't like it. That's like saying, I don't know, like you only listen to the soundtrack of a movie. So then, you, you know, you don't have a, a real opinion on it. It's like... But dude, that who does that? That's my point. But no, no, that's not that, what I'm that, saying. That, that, that's actually, what you're saying. I'm saying though. Yeah, that's what you're saying. No, I'm not. It's not though, because it's a show. A show is made up of many different working parts. But and but, you haven't but, seen the working parts. But those You've working parts. Clips. No, what I'm saying is that okay. So let me please let me finish. Okay, a show is made up of a lot of different working parts. But it's not like a symphony where you need all those. The, the nature of a symphony is to have all those parts working at the same time in tandem. It's the same, but it's not. That, that that is the end product is the symphony okay the symphony is the the end result of all those working parts working in tandem at the same time so is the show but you don't it doesn't you, you the way you're trying to break it down and, and dissect it does not make sense you know people do not listen to just the kettle horn or whatever in a kettle symphony horn. not not pragmatically just practically speaking that's not the reality that might work in your hypothetical abstract purely mathological Every, whatever yeah, you everything know. you're saying is supporting my argument I don't right keep, now. no you're not letting me finish though okay. you're not letting me finish maybe that's why see oh you can't have an opinion on my argument until i've actually finished it you're only judging half of it i'm not done with it so you're only judging 50% of my argument see you're only isolating one part you're only isolating the kettle drum and turning it into you know see it's not meant to be that way, but it's it's the same with like I don't know. You're, you're, it's like you're saying that I I've only read the scripts for each uh, Star Trek Discovery episode, and I haven't watched it yet in full, and so I haven't experienced the whole thing because I haven't seen the cinematography and the acting and the you know the the the, the, the editing, the post editing and stuff. Or it's like saying you know you, you're saying that I'm saying it like I I've seen all the Star Trek Discovery episodes without the the CGI or something, so I've just seen the 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 green screen and stuff in the background. I, I thought it was bad because it, there were just green screens but it's like no that's not star trek discovery because you have that's not the, the editing's not there yet so it's not even really star trek discovery it's not a complete thing that's what you're saying though i i, I still but the, the clips are part of the final product clips are just part of you know they're they're just they are just um excisions exitions whatever they are just little cutaway things they're just there there it's that's the end result that's the amalgamation of everything that went into that thing that is the final thing that's like i don't know you know what I mean? That's like saying, um, it's like, I guess, a grader or something. Someone grading a paper. It's like, yeah, you might write, you, if you write a bad set, if, if you, how about this? You write a paper, you're writing an essay for like the SAT or the ACT or something, your standardized test. You're trying to get into college. It's a big deal. 
but you, you on the last sentence of that, that it's a great essay up until the last sentence. And it says, the last sentence says, you know, Hey, dear, uh, you know, test administrator or whatever, go fuck yourself. I hate, I hate that you, uh, you know, wouldn't let me go to the bathroom or something. Guess what? You're going to fail probably because you just, you just still told someone to go fuck themselves in the last, you know, sentence of this otherwise good essay. You know, same with Star Trek Discovery for me. Okay. For me personally, I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm just trying to make my point heard and understood, uh, fully understood. I want it to be misrepresented. That's the only goal I have in um, outlining any of this to you, articulating it to you and to the audience. You want to be misrepresented. I don't want to be misrepresented. Okay. That's I literally just said I don't want to be misrepresented. Okay. Well, I, maybe I misspoke. Okay. Sorry. But look, here's the thing. You know, it's like I just, yeah, I, I feel like movies, show, shows and movies like Star Trek Discovery are telling the audience to do, like just straight up go fuck themselves. I'm not going to watch something that tells you to go fuck yourself. I'm not going to watch something that has I've watched all three seasons. I'm not stuff. saying it's the best Star Trek. I'm not saying I necessarily like it all. I'm saying, see, you're, you're, you're being just like if that cancel will, culture. You're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying you cannot. I disagree. I, I'm listening to you right now. Go you ahead. know, no, you're not. You're talking over me. I, I, I let you. You want to? You were talking you over want, me. That's why I had to finish. Go ahead. No, because you're just going to talk. We, 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 you know, we could be done right now. No. Okay. Why no. are you? Why are you getting mad now? See, I, getting no, mad? because you don't. You always interrupt me. I, I, I let you say something, and then, and then I get, and then I get two sentences. You know, so it's like you're still doing it. You're still doing it. Well, you, you interrupted me. That's why I had to, I had to stop to talk. And okay, yeah, go ahead. No, talk. Okay, please, please keep talking. Talk, talk. Just talk, please. You, no, because I'm. If you interrupt me one more time, we are done. Okay, because you are not even listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying you cannot. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter how you feel what it is. I always said your opinion is 100 percent true because it's your own. But you cannot have. You cannot evaluate something that you've never seen. You cannot evaluate something on just pieces. That goes for anything in the entire world. Okay, you cannot say this is you know whatever because you are just basically wholesale labeling a, a, an entire franchise and you and you think that i love it which i don't i'm just saying what you are saying if you had watched all three seasons is completely incorrect about the show no I'm not, I'm not labeling the franchise i'm just labeling that one show and that's what i'm saying discovery it's its own franchise within the star trek franchise. Oh, okay. okay you are labeling discovery as michael burnham and you derogatorily call her Mikey Spock because that's a term you got from Neurograta because he's the only one who uses it, okay? And then everyone else started using it after he did it. You, th th these are all little signals to me that you're just not even watching. You know, had I listened to Neurograta, I would have never okay, but finished Doctor Who, okay? And you know what? I have no problem with Doctor Who. I actually kind of like her whimsical, you know, portrayal of the Doctor. I think it's very unfair you know how neurotic just gets all butthurt because it goes against what he thinks it should be. I just I feel like you're really hung up on neurotic though, Dad. I don't know because he 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 is completely irrational, um, very angry, very belligerent, um, and very unbalanced person. Why are we why are we doing this? I don't know. It's like no, I I I feel that it is a very it, it makes me very sad that he's your idol. You know, it, it's, it's not like, just it's where I get my pop culture news. It, it's not political news. It does. There's no stakes that it's like sports. It's like, I don't know yeah, if you get something wrong in sports. Does it really missing, make much of a difference? You're missing out. I, I would have never watched so many wonderful um, uh, BBC British shows had, were it not for your mother. Because I would just like like I, like Vera and Happy okay. Valley and, and, and this other one that I can't even think of right now. These were excellent shows that I, I like. I, I feel like you think this is setting a precedent for me or something. And it's not because this is again. This it's, is sci-fi. It's, it's all I've been seeing. It's all I've been seeing from you. No, but okay. Well, and, well, and, okay. And it's all I hear from your room. Oh, here's your room coming through. With it. Oh, oh my, god. my okay. god, the system is broke. You know, the wokeness is taking over. You know, that, that's all I hear. I hear the yelling from your laptop. I I hear Nerdrotic's voice. Okay, in your you, again, you say that twenty four like, seven. You say like it's a bad thing, and it's not. A bad it is thing. a bad thing. And it's not all the time, too. Yeah, I feel like it's a huge exaggeration, by the way. But no, I'm just it's. Let me let me just put it out. Let's let's end this thing once and for all. You know, I don't know. It's I don't like genre fiction that much anymore because uh, a lot of it has been really bad since the Star Trek sequels trilogy. You know, 
I went on the internet to look for other people who shared the same opinion. I found them. I disagree with a lot of what they say. I agree with a lot of what they say. And I just don't, I don't need, because they are my only window into that world that I have very little uh, connection to now these days. Because I have other, I found other things since then. I've also grown, you know, as well. So now I, I like, for example, I like literature. I like art films, you know, art house cinema. I don't care about genre fiction as much anymore. I'm not into sci-fi. I'm not into fantasy. The only thing I, I get for any of that is just that the little window that, that uh, you know, channels like Nerdrotic and the rest of the, the members of the Phantom Menace, you know, and all of them, just they, that they give me access to. You know, same with like critical drinker stuff. I go there. The only way I can be interested in it now is if I look at other people kind of doing the footwork for me. I would never go out of my way to watch those shows. And that's just a, a personal thing. That's just a management of time thing. You know, it's like I can't even, I, I can barely manage time to like do the things I actually want to do, much less force myself to do things that I'm 50-50 on. You know, that's, it's just, that's what it comes down to. It's a practical everyday thing. And it's a very, you know, it's just a personal life thing for me. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be right or wrong. It works for me and I go with it. And, and I, I don't know, I feel like you think that uh, by watching this thing that, again, it's, it's kind of a, it's a very compartmentalized thing. Everyone compartmentalizes in life. You know, this is the one, this is the very, very minor compartment, minor component of the overall makeup of my everyday life. You know, I, I listen to it, but it doesn't leave much of an impact on me, you know, because again, I don't really care about genre fiction. This is just a way for me to still have some kind of connection to it because it used to mean something to me. And, and now that I'm not a kid anymore, you know, I, I still, I feel nostalgic about it sometimes. And so I come on, listen to people like Nerdrotic and stuff. And they, they tell me, you know, and it might, it might be their own filter and stuff, but I can see the filter. I'm not an idiot, you know, that I, I can see it. I pay attention to it. I disagree with, like, I would say I disagree with like a, a you know, two third, uh, not a third of what they say. I, I agree with the main kernel, uh, uh, you know, the, the thing that they're trying to, you know, the, the main thesis of their argument, which is that, uh, people in, in Hollywood and in the media shouldn't lecture you. And they shouldn't um, endorse one political party over the other. They shouldn't do that so blatantly. They shouldn't have this bias that's really messing up the culture right now. And that's what I agree with. That's what I watch them for. It's not really for the shows. The shows are just a pretext for that, you know? And I, I like the, the, the voice of reason in this time of, you know, divisiveness and whatnot. And they're mad for a reason, you know, and I, I, that's what I stand by. But that, that's where I'm coming from with it, you know? And I just don't think it's, uh, I, I don't know. I think it's a little unfair to kind of, you know, dismiss the whole thing just because, you know, of the execution. And I understand that the execution, maybe the way he yells and whatever bugs you a lot, but I, I like him and it works for me and I don't get bothered by it. And that's fine. We don't have to agree on this, but that, I just want my point to be known. I want my perspective to be um, completely, you know, understood. I don't want it to be misrepresented. And so that, that's all I was trying to do in this little, you know, debate of ours. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to be a, a dick or anything, you know, I, I'm sure the show is better than I'm making it out to be. I just, I, I, what I'm trying to make, I just don't have any interest in watching it personally, and I never will. Listening to other people talk about it is enough for me, because I, that, that in and of itself is a form of entertainment. I don't even care if it's accurate. I think it's funny that they, they bash it all the time. That's just, that's my personal disposition. I, it doesn't offend me. I, I think it's funny, you know? I, I see it as a lighthearted thing. I don't see it as a, a vitriolic thing, but maybe you do, and that's just different stories for different books. And you just said it's unfair to dismiss something over what did you say well i'm saying you're right though i'm you saying you're right dismiss yes a whole, you, you, you objectively said, speaking i'm wrong about the star trek thing you you said Discovery you thing. just said it's unfair for me to dismiss nerd rotic um just because of one aspect of his uh, of his uh what did you what, and you're I, right, you, you're I, right I, yes. I was trying i was trying to say something your logic is sound. I, I didn't want to interrupt you but you said you just you basically just proved my point. Yeah, what you're saying is that um you you you, you saying that I'm dismissing your product and I'm dismissing Star Trek Discovery because I've only watched clips. Yes, I know exactly. And, well, and so I guess to to sum it all up, what I'm trying to say is that you are you're right. Your your logic is right. It's objective. It's sound. I subjectively, I just I don't like that show. And so and I, there's I don't nothing care wrong, if I'm wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it. But there's everything wrong with saying all of Discovery is Michael Burnham trying to be a man. Yeah, but what you, I'm, you cannot say that. What I'm saying though it. is that. Okay. And then what I'm saying is that in entertainment, it's like with sports. It's like you don't your your opinion can be complete nonsense, and you just you stand up for it because that's just how we are as human beings. I don't know. We have we need things like that. We need to kind of be passionate about something. We need to get behind something. And if it's entertainment, again, the state there, there are no stakes. You can have fun with it. You can be stupid. You know, you can have these weird opinions that don't make any sense at all. They only make sense to you because that's just how you are as a person. It doesn't have to do with anything to do with logic or whatever. I'm not trying to be logical here. I'm not trying to you know. That's what it is. I, I, I am not mad. Um, I am not mad. I'm just defending this point stuff. because 
I, I just, I'm just saying, I'm mad that you're saying a whole show is something, I'm just watching the clips. You can never say that. That's exactly what the cancel culture is doing. That's ex- you are guilt. You're exactly guilty yeah, I know, of, but you, of, but you, of what you hate. Yes, but what you equate is, again, that's political. That's real. That has real world consequences. It's just a, a show. No, it's just a show. That is, no, no. And that, I'm, you know, it doesn't and, matter and if it's a show. It is a process of your brain that is going to go to everything else. No, and you, but you think it's setting a precedent, though, and it's not because, again, I, like I said, it's foundational. It's like how in people play. Reason. No, no, it's like how you play Grand Theft Auto Five, and then you don't kill people in real life because you get it out of your system or whatever. You know, it's like you you live out that fantasy or whatever, and then you you don't have to kill people, you know, or whatever. No, no, it's the same. No, thing. No. I, I think it's the same thing. It's yeah. not the same thing because. I don't you, apply that same nonsense logic to literature or to everyday life. I don't. I only apply it there because it's like a playground where you can mess with things. It's like it's like an intellectual playground. You can just do whatever the fuck you want. There's no real rules. That's the point of it. That's that's what it's there for. It's a little escapism, and for me, that that's a form of escapism for me to not no longer have to play by the set rules, I guess, and just have a, a completely nonsensical, stupid opinion and just and and you know and defend it. To you know, to the cows come on because that's just, that's just fun for me, you know. And maybe it's not fun for you. Maybe you don't get what I'm talking about, you know. But that's just that's how it is. And you're right. Yeah, I know. I probably should watch it, but I just I don't have any interest in doing it. And you're right. You know what? It's like a game for me. It's like a game. It's like a game. People play, people play games. We, human beings are game playing, you know, creatures. We, we live in a game playing society. We have since you know since the Greco Roman days. You know, you know since before. Uh, what what my problem is that I would have never have watched Captain Marvel had I listened to everybody else. But I feel like that's you, though. And the thing was, I watched Captain Marvel before I heard all the stuff from everybody else. And when I came out, I did not feel that it was virtue signaling. I did not feel that it was a feminist message. I just thought it was a, you know, it well, was an okay movie. And I didn't I didn't get any political message out of but it. That's, but um, yet, somebody else comes out. Well, and, no. And everyone's like, oh my God, you know. Well, Dad, but there, there's objective evidence for that because the, the actress playing her in interviews has been very vitriolic and, and done all that stuff. I don't need white men, 40 year white men, telling me how to watch my movie or whatever. It, that, that's, that's different. Yeah, that's, that's her saying that. But if you look at the actual movie. But what I'm saying is that it's still, a, it might no, be right. You know, but you know, I'm sure Brie Larson said all those things. I'm absolutely, I'm not. I'm but not she represents the brand and stuff, you know. So that, right. People but have you're that not thing. looking at the movie. Just as the but movie. Do you need to? There are so many movies. It's like, do you really need to, to care about that one? You know, no, it's, no, like, no, I'm it's already it lost its good grace. What I'm saying is that it, it, it's, a, it's a lack of professionalism in Hollywood. Pro- Hollywood's supposed to be professional. Oh. It's supposed to have. It's there, there's there, these people pay money to see these things. You know, these people, the, the audience okay, funds can you, their. Can you not interrupt me? Because you, you just interrupted me three times. I sat here and I said I was going to quit. All right. And you can play back this, you know, your recording, and you interrupted me three times. My whole point is that not anything that what you're saying is not, none of that is not true. It is true. But I'm saying that if you just watch the movie, forgot about the wokeness and the social message and the toxic male thing and all the press stuff, and if you just watched the movie, you wouldn't have gotten that message. Okay. And I, I agree with you. What you wouldn't have gotten that message. It would have just been, you know, a couple parts where, you know, um, the guy on the motorcycle goes, oh, why don't you smile, honey? And stuff like that. You know, okay. Then you're like, okay, but is that true? Yeah, that happens all the time. It still happens today. I work with men today that go into restaurants when we, you know, when we're when we're off duty. And they, and they do exactly that to the waitresses. And they do exactly that to all the women. Okay. You know, so how is that not true? So when I look at that, I'm like, I don't think that that's a, you know, some a virtue signaling, you know, toxic male, you know, feminist toxic male message. I go, that actually happens in real life. Yes, but <clears throat> what know? I'm saying is that you shouldn't devalue the other aspects of it. Again, the lack of professionalism, the vitriol, you know, actresses and people, cast members, directors and stuff attacking people on, on social media. Oh my God. That's all real. That's exactly what I'm saying about a uh, nerd erotic and all your other, um, basically a blowhard, you know, freaking angry YouTubers that you're listening to. What are you that, saying? Yeah. What are you saying? That... You're saying, um, I, you know, you're saying, oh, you have to take that all into account. Yeah, we're, you, you're you still, we're still on this point about dismissal, you, you, yeah. You cannot discount, you know, all, you know, Brie Larson telling, you know, yelling that 40-year-old men can't, you know, men, white men can't tell her what to do and all that sort of stuff. So 
but you're telling me to discount, you know, neurotic screaming through your bedroom door twenty four seven. You know, I'm not dismissing your opinion. I'm not dismissing your opinion. I'm asking you to have your own opinion. I have my own opinion. That's what I'm saying. Because uh, again, this isn't. I I, th- I think you're looking into this as something that it isn't. You know, genre fiction is very insignificant to me. It's a very insignificant part of my life now because they have lost my good graces a long time ago. Before you know, the, I think you're getting the sequence. You know, and it makes sense. You know, but it's like I I watch the people I watch on YouTube because I am dissatisfied with the state of uh, genre fiction and, and entertainment and, and, you know, the comic book industry, uh, nerd culture, everything like that. It's a mess right now. And it was a mess before. And then some people came along and started speaking out you against know, it. And I agree with their opinions. A lot. Of times and so I choose to get support right. them. You know, a lot of times I listen, you know, cause I, I, I watch nerd Rock, I watch, I watch Mike zero. I watched all the other guys before you even knew who they were before you were even interested. You, you, you keep forgetting that. Okay. You, you, know, you keep forgetting that I, I watched them before they got angry, and I watched them before they got all, you know, uh, you know, stupid. And um, you know, I watched them when they were all like that guy that you just um, had me watch um, the other day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When they're okay. Um, what, what's his name? I really respect oh, him, the what? British guy. Hill versus Babyface. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he's he's part of that group. He's yeah, a, but he, there's a range he's, of opinions. He, he's the only one that's maintained an even keel over the years. You know, but and, that's a subjective thing for you because that you the, the the way they speak bothers you, and, that, and that's what it comes down to. So it's like I have an opinion, I have a weird. I can't opinion. do a whole podcast angry. Okay, you know, well, and so that, know, that's what that's what it, that's it's abusive. Of it's abusive, and see, you, you, you. well, no, because I I was just gonna say that that's the crux of this whole thing is that I have a weird subjective opinion about Star Trek Discovery. You have a weird subjective opinion about these guys, you know, and that's just what it comes down to. I don't have a weird. I have an objective opinion. I have. An empirical, stati- I mean, measurable opinion. It's not an opinion. I have an observation. He's always angry. He's always yelling. He's always ranting. Yeah, but, but where it comes to be subjective is that it bothers you and it doesn't bother me. I don't think, I don't see it, you know. And that's I, fine. I get that he yells a lot, but it doesn't bug me because it's the context, you know. He's, he's, you know, not, he's not telling people to die or something. He's, you know, sometimes, he's not a politician. You know, he's just, he gets he stuff right sometimes. He's talking about pop culture. That, that's, that's the thing for me. You know, he gets stuff right sometimes. He's not always wrong. He gets, like, Supergirl is completely cringy, you know. Um, well, so that there's a use for people like that, that's it. Because they, 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 there's a reason why people But then them. he applies that filter to other things when it's not even there. But I just you know, but but it, it is there on Supergirl, you know, and that's why Supergirl's having problems, you know, because it's just you know every, everything every damn episode's a message, you know, it started off okay and then it got lazy. I'm just saying, even the slightest trace of that messagey stuff, though, that's enough because it's it's all part of the same institution. It is though, it's all part of the same generation of Hollywood creatives or whatever. It's all part of the same uh, cancel culture, you know. It's it's all part of that, and I just I choose not to support it. I choose to support people who, whose opinions I agree with, whose perspectives I share. That's what it comes down to. I don't know, you know? And and for me, again, it's like, I, I just, I, they struck the first blow, you know, with, with these people, with these creatives and stuff, Marvel, DC, all of them. They started doing this woke garbage and they, it's, it's very, um, you know, inflammatory. It's, it's like being slapped in the face. And if you're selling something to someone, that's the last thing you should do. You should tell the people who, you know, pay, keep, keep the lights on in your house, you know, to go fuck themselves and, you know, call them you know, uh, national socialists of, you know, 1940s Germany, you know, well, that. no, that, that's exactly why we don't have any Gillette products in our house anymore. Well, and so see that this is my way of, you that's know, why we don't have, my that's, opinion. that's why we don't have any Nike products in our house. That's why I canceled Disney plus, you know, I mean, that's why I don't go to Costco, you know, that's fine, but I make my own opinion. And I you make know, my, that, all, but uh, so what I'm saying is that I make, but my, I make my own opinion from observing it. I don't go, oh, I'm seeing it from a distance and then I'm going to listen to somebody else tell me how to think about it. That's all. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I, I agree that that's not, you know, good. But what I'm saying is that this is entertainment. This is not politics. This isn't me watching CNN. Inter- and, entertainment and having is my politics. Whole, and have, no. It, it, for, 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 oh my God. These aren't real politics though. This, 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 no, it is real politics. This isn't policy. Because real people are losing their lives. Real, uh, was it Roseanne Barr lost her job? Gina Carano well, and, lost her well, job. But that's exactly you know, what they're that, talking so about. So that though. is real politics. Well, so then that's exactly what they're against, though, is the thing. So it's like, you know, I don't know. This is real. You know, entertainment is politics. The, the two 
are so intertwined. It's not even, it, it's not right, but that's, that's just the way it is. You know, I mean, we had a president who was an entertainer, you know? Yes. We've had two. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, again, I, I feel like you think that, you know, because I watch Nerdrotic and, and stuff and base my opinions on what they say, I suppose, it's my choice to do that, by the way. But, you know, it's just, I, Dad, it's like, I don't know. You, you and, think that uh, that's going to lead into me being 30 and, and basing all my opinions on Fox News or CNN. That's my whole worldview shaped by NPR on, on the car ride I, I'm telling you, that's to work I'm or something. That's what I'm seeing right now because I, I, I'm not wrong. You have made wholesale um, – you have made wholesale um, opinion uh, – was it? Uh, yeah, but maybe it was and, – And rulings about things that you have not even seen personally or experienced firsthand. Well, and so what I'm saying is that I feel like you're kind of approaching it like again, like a like a, and it's not insult or anything, but like a legit, like a you know, a mathematician would approach a math problem with pure, you know, good faith, you know, purely logical. This is just the sequence of no other extenuating factors taken into consideration. I honestly barely even remember what I was talking about. You know, I might have that might have just been a heat of the moment thing. You know, it might have just been a random. Yeah, you know, my opinion could be completely different tomorrow. You know, I don't know. It's just, and that's what I'm saying is that this entertainment is is the it, nerd dumb fandom that's the whole point of fandom to have silly arguments like this you know that's what i'm saying is that it's it, and and i'm wrong i'm not trying to say that i'm right i'm not trying to make it skew this towards myself or whatever i get that this is you know that my opinion's not right it's not objectively right but it's just something that i choose to believe in i suppose and it's not gonna change me into some other kind of person or whatever it's not gonna make me this like uh, ignorant kind of biggie who just kind of sw swallows everything that's thrown at him, you know, kind of just everything goes in, you know, I, I'm not, not some sort of sponge that everyone else can indoctrinate or, or not indoctrinate or whatever. I'm not a sheep or anything just because I, I do this. It's, it's a different realm. It's not, you know, the realm of work. It's not the realm of politics. It's not the realm of paying your taxes and living your life. It's the realm of entertainment. It's the realm of Star Wars and Star Trek and Lord of the Rings, you know, that's what it is. And so in that, it's like with sports. It's like, do people act the same as they do it, you know, if people acted like if they, people had the same logic that they come into, like, you know, when they're watching a, a, a football game, you know, American or European, you know, that they did it at work, you, you think the world would, uh, you know, function? No. But for some people, they, they need that release. You know, they need to go on, on the weekends. They need to go and, um, you know, be football hooligans or whatever. And they, they need to yell at each other and to, you know, support their team. It doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's base tribalism. But, you, you need that. Some people need that. You know, I think everyone needs that to a certain extent. And there's nothing wrong with that because it's a natural thing to, to have. It's just part of our genetic makeup. Who we are is, is carbon-based life forms, you know? So that, that's what I think. And I just, I don't think Star Trek, I don't think this, this realm that we're talking about here, Star Trek, Star Wars and stuff, I like it a lot. I'm very passionate about it. I, but I just, I, 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 there's this distance that I had from it, you know, from when I was a kid. And it, it's, it's, you know, it sucks that things are the way they are, you know, and this is how I go, not necessarily to cope, but to, um, to still have that kind of relationship that I used to have with it as a kid. It's a lot different now, but I still have a connection to it through the people I watch on the internet and stuff, because they are my source for that. And if my opinions are based on their source, then that's uh, on those sources and that that's fine. But I don't see, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't set out to have a, a true objective, you know, correct opinion to begin with because i've already lost my interest you know they've already the, the companies and stuff they've already lost me on that so this is just me trying to be i guess a little diplomatic and, and salvage the best something out of this you know get something out of this pretty bad situation i would say with with culture and hollywood and everything and entertainment in geekdom comic books all of that you know that's what i'm trying to say you know what i mean yeah and i just don't think yeah, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna listen. I, I don't ever just take everything at face value. Anything at face value. I, I never do. I actually. I pride myself on um, trying to be every single day, striving to be a, a you know critical thinker, and um, and part of that is purging. You know, and I'm not gonna pretend like I don't have uh, you know a desire sometimes to just be uh, you know, an idiot, I guess, and just say whatever and yell at someone for the sake of yelling at someone or whatever, you know, and getting my, you know, just, just being right, even if it's not right to be right in that case. But this is the, this is where I, I get it out of my system, I suppose. And I think everyone has that in them and that's how I, I do it. You might do it a different way, but I, don't, I feel like I'm better for it because once I kind of 
I, I cut loose in, in with, with regard to nerddom, you know, fandom, geekdom. Uh, once I purge in the realm of entertainment, I can come over to literature and I can be, I can be like crystal clear, you know, like my, my mind's cleared. I'm ready to just hone in on the book or whatever. And, and it's, it's great, you know, and I couldn't do that if I didn't do fandom stuff first, you know, or life. And, and maybe I, I, well, I could still do it, but it's just, it enhances the situation. It, it enhances it for me. It, that's just how it is. I don't know. What do you think? I just don't think it's serious, Dad, you know? I don't think it's CNN or Fox News. It's just... I mean, we could, we could sit down and watch Star Trek Discovery one of these days. It's no, not, I don't necessarily like it. I know. See, you misunderstand I, I, I get, me. No, I, don't I don't necessarily need... I don't actually want to go watch it again because I went through it already once and it was fine to go through once. I don't think that I would have the patience to go watch it through it again. You know, I'm just saying you're making you're you're making a judgment about something you have not experienced. I'm actually a very open-minded person, believe it or not. You know, that's another <laughs> no, no, thing. Not I from what, do you rewind this tape. I try rewind, to rewind, re rewind this thing. You said you know it's it's Mikey Spock, okay, which is a derogatory term that 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 that, that you got. You're not even giving you know the character of Michael Burnham, you know the respect, the the objectivity of of watching her character by herself, which I'm not saying I like or I dislike because what I'm saying, you automatically think, because I say that, that I am, that I like, her, and you know, your, your gut reaction was that, oh, I'm standing up for her and everything. I'm not, I'm not necessarily, she was very cringy and she, but she was not trying to act like a man during the whole thing. Okay, okay. See, that was completely incorrect. And that gets me upset because you're taking nerd Roddick's opinion and making it fact where you, when you have not, on your own, experienced or watched it. There are so many other cringy aspects of her character, and about one of them is not her trying to be a man at all. Okay, I parodied him. I did. I parodied him. I talked about something that I I, I tried to be the expert about something that I didn't know. She's disrespect. You know, she 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 doesn't um, uh, she doesn't respect command authority. She is. Um, you know, she, she, she goes rogue all the time. She always feels that her opinion is the only one that's matter. And she is the only one that's right. And nobody else is right. You know, right. those are, those are character traits that had you watched the show, you would have said correctly that those are her flaws, you know, and then they try to make it so that, you know, um, you know, the, the, she is the Ariel, you know, the little mermaid of the, uh, uh, of Star Trek Disney. It's like, she's going to go out there and make all the wrong decisions put everybody else at risk. She's going to risk the universe. The gal she's going to risk everybody, but she's going to always come out on top. And right. the message is wrong. The message is that, you know, if I just do whatever my heart desires and I just do what I think is right, it's all going to turn out great. Right. right. You know, it's the little mermaid thing, you know, and that's not how reality works. And that's a dangerous message. Right. Yeah. It's not about being a strong person, you know, male, female, black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, whatever. You know, and standing up for your values. It's not about that. It's about her being reckless and coming out on top all the time. To me, that's a dangerous message. Yeah, so why would I want to support a show like that? I see. I'm not saying you need to support a okay, show okay. like that. I'm sorry, saying sorry, you sorry, don't sorry. come out with parroting nerd Roddick and go, oh, I'm not going to watch it because she's a man. Okay. You know, she's training. You, you are so wrong in that that it just is, it, it's very upsetting. Because, why is it so upsetting, though? Because you don't even give anything a chance. I did give plenty of chance, though, Dad. You know, if you, we wouldn't even be having this discussion if you just said, you know, I just don't like the look and the feel of it. I don't want to watch it. I'm like, okay, I get it. But then you, you say things that are just so wrong because you're listening to, you know, this angry man, okay. you know, uh, uh, on YouTube. Okay. And, and, and his, you know, his assessment was completely off. Okay. Well. You know, she you has, you, know, you see, she has other character flaws that I just don't agree with the writing on, you know, and. But you didn't. You don't even mention any of those. You I'm know? wrong. I've never seen it before. I've barely seen any clips, anyway. Okay. And I, I just took someone else's opinion at face value for the sake of this argument. I don't believe it, though. I don't know. I don't really. And that's what it comes down to, Dad. You, you, you know. You don't believe that. I, that you don't believe that he's wrong. No, I, I just I listened to it. and I was like, probably, but I, I didn't. I don't have the objective, you know, I don't have that perspective. I think he and the others were uh, very harsh about their assessment when it came to Wonder Woman 1985. I thought it was a very 
forgettable movie. I didn't think that they needed to get as mad as they did about it. But there could be a reason for that. Maybe they need to make a living. You know, maybe that's how they appeal to their audience. They they turn it into it, that their rage and stuff is a form of entertainment. And so it is an act. It is part part an act. You know, the kernel of truth is still there, but it's like anything else. It's a show. They're putting on a show, and that's what I watch it for. And I don't really see. I don't know. It's just not. It's not reality to me, Dad. It's not reality. You know, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. It's it's entertainment. It's entertainment about entertainment that isn't entertaining to me. So I watch the people who turn that garbage in, in whatever into entertainment. And whether it, the garbage really is, whether the, how about this? Whether the garbage really stinks as much as they say it does, I don't know. But I, I'm fine with a little high, power, high hyperbole here and there because I don't take it at face value. I just, I said something, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I let something slip. I, I don't really, that, again, it's like, it doesn't hold high for me it's not my opinion on let's say like abortion or something or gun control or some big issue like that it's just an opinion on star trek yeah you know but, uh, but and on the star trek show that i don't even care about you're you're my son i understand and, that thank and, you and, and, and that you, the process that you come to you just saying something that was completely incorrect because you're taking you, you know you you heard it from somebody else is very troublesome to me okay but dad and, and and then what i'm saying is that we're just this is a, a show you know it's just it's a, a flux of conversation and whatnot you know it's like i don't this is the opinion that this this opinion i have on a very minor thing i i think personally might not be, even be the same tomorrow and i would be perfectly willing i'd be happy to watch the whole of uh, star trek discovery with you and we could talk about it after i i've been light mm. after i i have the, the the credibility to talk about it because i've seen it you know as a viewer and i have that understanding i can i will do that I'm perfectly happy to do that because I was never trying to be right in the first place. And I'm not trying to say that as a way to, again, to veer the discussion towards me. I just, you know, yeah. And I I, I thank you for your concern, Dad, but it's really not, it's not not a big deal. It's not a, you know, mountain out of molehill kind of thing. You know, if we want to talk about open-mindedness, we're going to, this is, we're going to close it out now. Um, I... To be honest, yeah, see, I wouldn't have watched any of these Star Trek movies if we hadn't been doing this podcast, you know? So right. I, w- I tried to be open-minded about it, and, and I had a good time, you know? And, and to be fair, my opinion is still the same about all of them as it was before. They're all right. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not nearly what Star Wars, the Star Wars films are, but they, they're also based on a show. The show is the, the main thing for Star Trek. It's not these movies. The movies were exactly as I thought they would be. They are, they're kind of, they're just minor they, they, they are good. I can look at them objectively, but I don't, I don't feel anything towards them because I don't have any personal connection towards them. That's how I feel about them, and that's how I felt about them coming into them. So it's the same. But I was open-minded, and I, I got into it, and I liked the experience. I'm glad we had the experience. I'm glad we were able to record these and have conversations and spend some time together, you know? Um, but And then to just close off with, I guess, the, the thing I was actually you know, going to say about open-mindedness. You know, it's like I... Same, I mean, with this podcast as well, it's like I never would have, well, and just in in life in general too, it's like I never would have, um, I never would have known how much uh, I liked um, Breaking Bad if I didn't sit down and watch it because I I thought the hype was too big for it, you know, Mm -hmm. and I sat down and watched it, It, it's, and I I still stand by how I thought, I think it's, it's not really quite my thing. But I still, it's still one of my favorite shows of all time because it is well written. But it's not personally. I would put Mad Men in a whole new class. Even though the last two seasons of Mad Men aren't good, I just I like the subject matter. I like their approach to things. I like it better. They're both very well written shows. They're both some of the best shows of all time. Oh, and then Sopranos too. It's like you know, I I gave Sopranos a chance. I was open minded about it, even though it looked like something I would have no interest in at all. And guess what? I, I'm halfway through season one right now, and I still don't really like it that much. But I'm willing to sit through it. Because that I, I care more about that than something like Star Trek Discovery. And maybe I'm a pretentious fuck, you know. Because... You are. You're, you're a college student and you're at that age where, you know, but no, you, but... you, you fancy yourself an intellectual and you're learning all these new things. And, I, I you know. know. I feel like, but see, I feel like that, again, that's kind of a put down, though, Dad. I feel like it's a little bit of a dismissal, you know. No, it's just it, every college kid, your mom. Yeah, uh, but then that, that's. All that. But I feel like you're ignoring. Everything else that came before that, like how when I was 10, I read Charles Dickens, you know, when I was, you know, eight, I read Harry Potter like five times a a week, you know, I've always been into literature. I've always been more into literature than I have. um, Well, maybe not always more, but it's always been a part of my life. You know, now it's just, it's the dominant part of my life as opposed to um, the arts are that, I guess you could call that. Yeah. I guess the, the humanities are more a part of my life now than pop culture is or whatever you want to call it, genre fiction. 
I would, you know, and, and well, for this podcast too, I never would have gotten into the Yukio Mishima uh, biography directed by, in fact, executive produced by Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas, as a matter of fact, that movie, um, 1986, I believe. I never would have liked that because it seemed cringy, you know? The, the character and the writer that that's based on is a guy, a schiz- he was a functioning schizophrenic who uh, killed himself because he thought that um, death was, beauty was fleeting and the only way to preserve your dignity as a human being was to kill yourself when you were young. You know, I was like, that's weird shit. I don't want to watch that. It sounds cringy as fuck. I sat down, and I watched it. I liked it, you know, and I didn't have to, I didn't like all of it. I didn't agree with all of it. I didn't, I don't even, you know, I don't agree with the writer at all, but I, I'm glad that I had that experience. I'm glad that I had that perspective. So I, I do pride myself on, on having an open mind, you know, and I do pride myself on giving things chances. And what I'm saying is that, you know, I just personally, I don't, I, again, like I said, I barely have enough time to do things like, you know, read the novels I want to read or watch the, you know, the Tarkovsky film I want to watch or whatever, whatever the, you know, again, whatever pretentious bullshit I I feel like, uh, you know, partaking in. I barely have time to do that, much less watch something that I'm not really interested in, you know? So that's, that's all I want to say. I feel like I've made this point enough. I'm sorry that I upset you, Dr. I didn't mean to upset you. Have you watched uh, what Eckerd's Ladder had to say about the Corano situation yet? Uh, I, I don't. I, he's not one of the channels I watch. Unfortunately. Okay. So is it good? No, I, I I just saw it come up on my feed, and I'm wondering. I I don't have time to watch the whole 11 minutes and 42 seconds of it. I, I don't think I'm exhausting though. <laughs> yeah, you, of course you don't, because you like listening to yourself talk. But how am I so, exhausting? Though? Because you're just always arguing. But see how I made my point and now you kind of see my perspective more because you gave me the time to fully flush it out and stuff without, you know, we, we, we did it. We, this is the, we did a full discussion now. The, the points have been made. It's all come full circle now. And, and isn't it different now than it was before? Sure, sure. So I, I don't know. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone or anything. It's just, you know, that's why I like this kind of stuff because you need to have the full thing. And, and that's why I, I just got, you know. A little heated when you said that I, I don't, you know, I'm not willing to give full things a chance, things in full a chance, because that's exactly well, what well, I Well, you do. weren't, you weren't until we finished this discussion and then you finally said, okay, I'll watch, I'll watch Discovery, which was not my goal because I don't really need you to watch Discovery. My goal is just for, my goal was, which was for you just to have your own opinion, Okay. you know, and, and, and you communicate, you know, and then you, you pretty much communicated that you, you, you do. So then, you know, we're done. And, and what I'm saying is that we both, every every human being, Dad, is guilty of um, not giving things a chance like that, you know, letting their emotions yeah, and then trump just, logic and all I'm, that. I'm just very sad that you were going to miss out on a lot of things, you know, had it not been for your mother and I, you know, sitting down and watching stuff together. Um, I don't feel like you know, I, I would have missed out on so many things. That show was called No Offense, huh? And I just, I still did stand. You, did you hear about, did you watch Mike Zero's thing on the... I don't, I, I wouldn't watch Mike Zero. I don't know, so because I, I know he he's is so weird. weird. He is he, weird. He's I, terrible. I, he's like garbage level uh, YouTuber. Oh. He makes money. I, I, I he he makes more money than I ever would. But yeah, that's what I stand by. I stand by my opinion. So, yeah. And here we are. So we, we did it. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? Nope. All right. Bye, everybody.